hello, hello, what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What is up, Evie, Nalakilla, Stone Rain, Irrelevant, Skeletons, Dogameth, Sir Robert, Mega Magikarp. Hopefully you're feeling better. How is everyone doing today? Lucid, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ah, so today, today we're going to have some fun. So the plan for today, we're going to talk Ixalan, of course, because... My god, is this that absurd? Do I say that every set? I think I say that every set. But this set, I really, like, uh, this set is really powerful, right? Am I am I off base here? Am I am I the only one that thinks this set's, like, really pushed and interesting? I don't know. But I think this set's really good. The other thing we gotta do is, uh, this weekend, I miss modern streams. I'm sure we'll play some more modern Alex Mateo. Modern, uh, I still love modern. You ever have a you ever have a relative that you love but you don't like? <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, sometimes I feel like that's my current relationship with modern. I love modern. It's still my all time favorite format. But lately, actually playing modern has been kind of hit or miss, depending like scam and beanstalks and one rings. Like I don't know if I actually am really enjoying the meta of modern that much at the moment. The Mike Arnold, welcome to the fishbowl for the eighty third month. Thank Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the, the plan for today, there's a, a charity stream coming up this weekend. So if you're looking for more magic and more streaming action, I'm going to be playing in that. And I need to find a historic brawl deck and a standard deck to play. And I got a couple of ideas, but I was hoping that we could come to a conclusion of what we should actually play in this tournament. Also talk about Ixalan, have some fun. What does the charity benefit? So it's actually like... Uh, so, my understanding of it, and an Ultimate Guard is doing it, and they'd be able to <laughs> probably answer the questions way better than, I'm just playing in it, I'm just playing in it. But my understanding is there's a bunch of charities, so there's like several pods of players. In each pod is kind of like a team, and each pod has a different charity that they're playing for. So then you play, then you play, uh, you play the first day, and it's historic brawl, and then the top people in each pod make it through to standard, which is the second day. So it's a variety of uh, a variety of charities will be supported by it. That's my that's my current understanding of how it works. Um, so yeah, historic brawl first, and then standard on Sunday. Are you streaming it, or is it on someone else's? Uh, I believe. I want to say it's on LSV's channel. I want to say it's on LSV's channel, although, uh, uh, don't, don't 100%, oops. <laughs> although, don't 100%, uh, 100% quote me on that. It is possible that, uh, that I'm wrong. So, who is on my, who is on my team? Let me, let me pull up the, let me pull up the teams here. So, 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 um, on my team, there's actually a lot of really, really good players, um, so my team is Seth Manfield, me, MTG MIT Patrick, Higher MTG, Ash Lizzle, and oh god, Uber Uble Star, Uble Star. Uh, so that is that is my group. There's also like Nasif's in it, Frank Carson's in it, Kai's in it, Domer's also in it. There's a ton of there's a ton of people in it, so it should be cool. It, it's on the weekend. It's Saturday, eleven Eastern. It starts. It's Saturday, 11 Eastern, uh, and then you may or may not make day two, so possibly also on Sunday. But uh, we start with some historic ball. Also, <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a really cool event, and we've been talking about doing more charity stuff. We'll still do our own charity stream, I think, this holiday season. But uh, it's a good a good charity thing. Can we get a link to the tournament info? Uh, let me see if I can find one. I've mostly seen it like on YouTube and on Twitter. I don't know if there's a I don't know if there's a, a website for it. I would look so the Ultimate Guard Instagram slash Twitter is probably probably the best place to get information uh, information on it. I've retweeted some of the stuff, but I think that's the place to go. I know there's stuff like on their YouTube and on their Twitter. Like this YouTube video I think is <laughs> I don't know if this is the best link, but this is this is a link I've seen. So, so anyway, I gotta ask you though before we get it, we gotta do reminders too. What do you think of this green god? So we've seen the gods, we've seen all the gods, and honestly, like I was thinking the gods weren't actually that strong. Like I've been burnt too much by these red mythic four drops. 
Uh, the blue one, eh, I don't know, four mana, four, three. The bat gods, like, kind of sweet. But I was thinking they were all, uh, Ogier Tak is, like, super cool. But, it, like, six mana, even for tripling your tokens. Is it made for standard? Is there a commander card? So I had thought, I uh, sort of thought, okay, these gods, they're cool. But they're mostly designed to be commander cards. But then they showed the green god. And this green god, is this green god not ridiculous? Five mana, six, five, trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of your library you can put a creature and or a land from among them on the battlefield the rest on the bottom in a random order so you hit your opponent for all the damage six card deeps grab a land and a creature i feel like that card is like by far better than all the rest of the gods it's kind of like over the top i actually feel like this set is actually really really good i, I feel like kamigawa is the number one set in standard i feel like this is Maybe not quite Kamigawa, but I feel like it's actually very close to Kamigawa in power level. And I think once we start playing, there's so many weird mechanics and so much text on these cards that it's kind of hard to evaluate them like without playing them. But I think they're going to play very, very strong. I think they're going to play really well. Also, speaking of the gods, yeah, new rampant growth, dino, lanamore elves, or birds of paradise. Speaking of the gods... Chat, is there a reason for this? Maybe there's some reason that I don't understand. So the black god is a bat god. <laughs> None of the other gods have types, though. The blue god, especially if you see the showcase version, it is, like, very clearly a snake. Like, that, that's definitely a snake. Why is the bat god a bat god? And all the rest of the gods, even though they're presumably something, and the blue one is, like, very, very obviously a snake, why are none of them getting creature types? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. Is Caverns Eldrain 2.0? I mean, I think that it's, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't think it's Caverns 2.0. I don't see an Oko. I, I don't know if I see the, which I think is good. I don't think I see a Shieldred or an Oko. I don't know. Maybe, like, I am very scared of Discover. Maybe it's Contorius gone. Maybe that's the card that everyone sleeps on and is just, like, ridiculously busted because Cascading is such a strong mechanic. But I do think it's a very high, very high power set. Bat God is the origin of the vampires and Oh, so you gotta read the lore. I see. Well, reminders. Replay YouTube. As we invite all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. Spoilers all week against odds tomorrow is a pretty fun one. Bonus content this weekend with the charity stream. A reminder that are sponsored today's Card Kingdom. And if you need to pick up some Lost Caverns of Ixalan cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Even get a free goldfish sticker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. Yeah, the amount of text on these cards is literally over the top. So anyway, as far as playing Magic today, so here, here's what I need your help with, Jess. So this charity tournament, we want to raise a bunch of money. To raise a bunch of money, I think we got to win. We got to make day two. So I'm curious if you have suggestions. There's Whenever it comes to tournaments, I never know what to do. So on one hand, I want to play something spicy and fun. On the other hand, there's also like an incentive to win. So I need to find a historic brawl deck, which I think I have a historic brawl deck. I think I'm going to play this deck that Lucid sent me. I made a couple of updates to it. I think I'm going to play Braids for historic brawl. Because Braids, I think... I think Braids, like, walks the line between, like, being good and also being, like, a cool character and kind of a unique deck. So I'm leaning towards, yeah, I'm leaning towards playing this uh, this Braids deck for the Historic Brawl portion. I am open to, I'm open to other ideas. I'm also a little concerned that, so I imagine this is going to be all, like, the super, the super busted, the super busted commanders. I imagine people are going to spike this up, and it's going to be, like, all Goloses and, like, just the strongest, the strongest commanders. Is Amazonian in it? Ah, uh, maybe. Lucid Braid deck are really good. Yeah, so, so what is your suggestion for, what is your suggestion for Brawl? Five color battle pin harmonicon. What would the commander be for five color battle pin harmonicon? It's also, it's also in a uh, challenge mode. So I believe that that means cards play as printed and not the rebalance versions. I don't want to play. See, that's what I don't want to do. It's, I don't want to just be like, oh, it's a tournament, so I'm gonna play Rusko or like Golos or something that's like legit busted but not spicy. I feel like Braids is good. Oh, Shieldred. I feel like Braids is good, but also, like, does Braids count as spicy? <clears throat> Sorry, if I'm coughing at all, I've come down with a cold, unfortunately. Five color. <coughs> what would five color battle uh, commander actually 
actually look like? Do you have a deck list? The idea of five color battles is sweet. I thought about trying to play the... Oh, no. What was the meme deck? With the... Like, is it Commander Legends Commander? In the blink cap. <laughs> I wanted to pull that off on camera, but... It doesn't actually... It doesn't actually... Uh, it doesn't actually ever work. <laughs> you can play 100 rhinos. That would be super iconic. Who 100 rhinos would be a challenge. Tom Sagas. Tom Sagas could be cool. I haven't actually built a, build a Tom deck list. I feel like Braids... So I've played a few games with this deck. And I feel like Braids is actually really good. Because you just like... You play all these dorks. And then you just run out Braids. And Braids is insane. Although I think actually... It might be better just just a grave pack here. Get down grave pack. How is our opponent ever gonna deal with grave pack? They're mono black. <laughs> Love braids for normal ball. The key is to include things like Rolos and Blood Tokens rather than focusing on creatures. I love my big mana Chandra deck. Ooh. The biggest challenge, I think, is definitely gonna be is definitely going to be standard. I have no I mean I <laughs> my current my current standard list. <clears throat> Opponent, would you like to select the vampire? You probably should, because it's about to get grave packed anyway. Vampire the Dire Moon, eh? Wow, like... <laughs> Why? Why, Opponent? Why? 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 Opponent gonna murder our braids. You should play my Esper Control list for standard. What is what does your Esper Control list look like, Stone Rain? And also, do you mostly play it in best of one or best of three? So Historic Brawl is obviously best of one. Teamer Adventures with Baluna. That could actually be really fun. I don't actually have a Teamer Adventure list. So out of standard decks that we've played, the ones that are intriguing to me are the Lich Knight's Conquest deck. Mm. Mm. Uh, that deck I just really enjoy playing. So that's my that's my current default option. I think is is the Lich Knight's Conquest deck. Uh, I am feed the swarm in this deck. I feel dirty whenever I cast it, but I don't design the cards. Unfortunately, actually, probably fortunately, I don't think I don't think I would be a good Magic designer. Actually, <laughs> I would probably just make a lot of Blood Moons. Have you thought about stacks? Stacks for Historic Brawl. So I did think about stacks. Oh, you know what would be funny is Turbo Fog. That might actually be the... <laughs> that might be the funniest. How many fogs... Are there enough fogs to build Turbo Fog in Historic Brawl? I've never... I don't think I've tried to build <laughs> Turbo Fog in Historic Brawl. Uh, what are we doing here? We can't braids as much as we want to. We could Beseech. Oh, I know what we do. Oh, yeah, this is this is so brutal. Besiege Sack Shadow Sphere. We don't actually know. Yeah, okay, Sack Shadow Sphere. We don't need the life gain. Uh, and then I think we get a Necro. What would be the best commander for Turgo, Turbo Fog? Actually, is the one ring better? Probably not. You can't, you can't beat a Necro. All right, let's draw a new hand every turn. <laughs> I mean, I don't even need to present Panharmonicon designs to Watsi. They just do it themselves now. <laughs> every every set there's a Panharmonicon. <laughs> Who would have thought they'd go from like not ever printing Panharmonicons to very rarely printing Panharmonicons to now it's like expected that every set there's a Panharmonicon. Yeah, Necro was actually legal in Historic Brawl and good God is it busted. Uh, all right, take one opponent. What about five color super friends? Ooh, the friends part would be good for charity. Ah, what would the what would the five color super friends commander be? You can't have a planeswalker as your commander in brawl. That is allowed. Infinite Acerarak brawl. That combo is sweet. I've never tried to build it in historic brawl, but having Acerarak as your commander is a is a nice upside. And we'll just kind of land and. Uh, probably black cat, I guess. All right, opponent. All right, opponent. All right, shield rid. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So okay, question one is: Is braid spicy enough? Is braid spicy enough to be our historic brawl deck? What is the fog commander? That's the other question. 
Turbo Fog would be hilarious. Actually, after this game, maybe we try to build Turbo Fog. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you have the one ring, so we shouldn't do that. Let's uh play an Undead Augur. Play a Yarlox, Yarlox, Yarlox Fenlurker. Yeah, Sarek, you don't get the cost reduction, so you're going to need very specific pieces. Yeah, Jota might be a bit sweaty for my for my taste. I want to avoid, like, the best, most busted commanders for sure. Like, I don't really want to play Golos. I don't really want to play the clock alchemy thing, whatever that's called. Like, I would rather play something that's, like, uh, spicy but also has... That's the ultimate dream, right? Like, to win with the spice is is the real dream oh no we're we gonna miss a land okay we find a land thankfully uh we will discard a uh blood ghast and a land all right opponent you need a big turd to fairy hero of dominaria turbo fog but you need green for the fogs you need green the only greens are in the only fogs are in green right i guess you get to fairy's protection and wipe so what do you think of, uh, what do you think of Ixalan? How strong do you think this set is? Am I overrating it? Is it actually not as busted as I think? Quintorius Lore Master. Yeah, who can get mad about an elephant? <laughs> I, I'm actually, after this game, I actually want to trade to build Turbo Fox. Wow, opponent. Oh, we don't have our Blood Artist out. Okay, I guess that makes a lot more sense then. Opponent going to meatball away our board. <laughs> Boo and hiss. Oh. Actually, maybe this is okay. Maybe this is okay. Can we just kill our opponent at some point with this Grey Merchant? I wish we had more mana. That's the biggest pinch at the moment. Grey Merchant's only seven? Well, I guess we play Blood Artist. Play Lazatep Reaver. Play Vron. We're just going to keep rebuilding. Just keep rebuilding with the dorks. Necro. Necro is such an obscene card. How is it... How was it that people underrated this when it came out? That's the thing that puzzles me most about Necro. How was there a time when people were like, eh, draw draw 15 cards for 15 life. That's probably not good. How was, there, how was this underrated? How is it possible that it was underrated? Well, discard a land, discard a land. Hey, Seth. No need to answer if you'd prefer not to. Has your voice changed? I like it then, and I like it now, but... I have not caught you in a while, and I was curious if I was going crazy or misremembered. Well, I have a cold at the moment, so that might be that might be part of it. Strongest standard sense, uh, set since Neo. So I think my voice is a little wonky right now because of that. So probably certain cards. What cards do you think are powerful, Teo? What would be on your powerful list? Because I feel like this set overall, I mean, it's got Cascade. I think that crafting is really good. I feel, Well, I like that craft puts spells on permanence. The, the actual crafting, I don't know how relevant. <laughs> I don't know how often you're going to pay a million mana to flip into a medium creature. We haven't really seen that be a, wow, Necro. Oh, Necro hoses Shieldred. We skip our draw and Necro doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't actually draw. <laughs> we got Necro. It does everything. It does it all. Winter Malant. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoops here for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you changed your EQ or room since you started? Oh, yeah. Many, many times. Well, like, so some, <clears throat> some sound changes. Definitely different places. Definitely just, like, quality of stuff is way better. Like, my microphone now is uh, leagues better than when I first started with a $20 headset or whatever. So I'm sure that's also part of it. I also have, like, my own recording area. When I first started recording, I was recording in a space that had, like, tons of people around. And I always, uh, I always felt like I needed to be careful not to, like, disturb anyone. So I was kind of, like, quiet and whispery. And now I actually have my own recording space, which makes it a lot easier. Oh, ooh, Vrani. All right, sure. Opponent kills the Vron. Gets drained. We're actually, like, super close to just straight up winning. 
We're like a we're like a gray merchant away. Do you actually play Historic Brawl? How many of you play Historic Brawl? Are you planning on going to Magic Con in Chicago? Ye I I hope to. I haven't made actual final plans, but yes. I do I do intend to. Well, let's just let's do it this way. Let's sack actually no. Go to combat attack. We're like a mana away from winning here. Pony goes to 14. Tower. Sack the dork. Drain you. Gain some life. Zulaport cut through. Crown. Do a bit of necroing. We have drawn so many cards with this necro. Hey Seth, I just want to say thanks for all the videos. They are a wonderful part of my life practically every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Homeroom Apex, thank you so much for the kind words and for the cheer. What uh, what do you play in Historic Brawl though? Actually, oh, you have a stack stack. What is what is your stack stack, Polo? I do like making people miserable. Can we? <laughs> I think that'd be fine, right? You can make people miserable for charity. How can they complain? It's for a good cause. <laughs> this is my Frodo Historic Brawl deck. Ooh, let me let me see Stone Rain. So, chat, for standard, how do you feel about control? Are we are we dirty control players? Ooh, Zimone and Dina sounds sweet. Could you bring back your... I, I mean, could. Can we play whatever we want? The possibilities are endless, opponent. Does the one ring save them? Can we get enough mana symbols? Can we get enough mana symbols to win with this Gary? Gary's for what, 12, 13, 14? We're so close. We are so close. Ponent, wow, Dark Ritual, okay. Sure. <laughs> All right, plant here, yes. About it passes. Are we gonna die if we mill? We're not gonna die, right? That's not gonna happen. Well, we should be fine. Two to the top. Uh, you know what? We're going to lose life. Oh, just to land. Okay, just to land. All right, can we win this turn? That's a question. Can we win this turn? I think the answer might be yes. Maybe. Uh, so we draw nothing. So if we Grey Merchant, that's 14. And then we go to combat and just attack with everything. And opponent, dead, dead, dead. Yeah, if we lost to that milling, that would be so brutal. So I mean, that's the braids deck. How are we feeling about? How are we feeling about braids? How are we feeling about braids? Like, would you be disappointed if braids was the deck we played? Frodo. Frodo is cool. So this is kind of like Frodo, ooh, Nazgul's, Voltron. Nazgul's are pretty powerful. I've always liked playing Nazgul's. Chandra, Disco Inferno. Ooh, like Big Red. Is there a Stuffy Doll or a Brash Taunter? No. <laughs> Winning with Brash Taunter would be sweet. I do love some Brash Taunter. This deck does look sweet. It just has so many like huge top end things. As per control, does look good stone raid. I can see that being a very good standard option. Are there even enough fogs? Are there enough fogs in existence? Necro also keeps you from milling. Are there enough fogs to actually make a historic brawl turbo fog deck? That's the question. I don't even I don't even know if there are. Well, let me let me see a uh, pillow. Stacks. Oh, <laughs> uh, I do like stacking people. Okay, okay, Dovins. I mean, this does have a lot of the good stacks cards. I played the, <clears throat> I played the mono white, the mono white uh, Gideon stack stack a while ago. The salt deck. Oh, Polly Owl. Oh, that makes that makes way more sense. So what is what is your pick for a card you're most excited for from Lost Caverns? The set. Oh boy. It's so what are these new commander cards? Are these new commander cards good? 
Tetsin Gnome Champion, 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. When it or another double-faced artifact? Wait. When it or another double-faced artifact enters the battlefield under your control, military guards, you can put an artifact card from a them into your hand. Craft with six artifacts into a 6-6 six, six Vigilance Trample. When it enters the battlefield, attack transform up to one target double-faced artifact you control. Have we really... S it's a very specific... That's a very specific power. It cares specifically about double-faced artifacts. Cresting Musumosaurus. Musumosaurus. 8 mana, 4, 6, a merge of 7. When ETBs, if you cast it, return each non-dinosaur creature to its owner's hand. Oh, that's like a good dinosaur card. Splitting Dil... <laughs> These names, my god. Is this the wor the most challenging name set in the history of Magic? Not only do you have all the Ixalan stuff, and some of these Ixalan names are pretty much impossible for me to say correctly. So not only do you have that, but then you also have random dinosaur names, which also are like Dilophosaurus, Gigantosaurus. The names are the names are so over the top. <laughs> Grim. What is putting Dilophosaurus? ETBs are attacks, but an even name counter up to one target creature. Creatures your opponents control when they even one counter is on them can't block. That's not that exciting of a commander card. Grim Gigantosaurus. Seven mana, ten, ten. Monstrous of twelve, but it costs one less. For each creature you control with power four. Wait, no. For each creature your opponents control with power four greater. When it becomes monstrous, destroy all artifacts and creatures other than Grim Gigantosaurus. Wow, that's actually... That's actually kind of brutal. Yeah, I do think wizards probably... They might do it on purpose to troll me. <laughs> What do you think of the box toppers? I will say, I feel like the box toppers are kind of a disappointment, in all honesty. Like, I feel like the box toppers could be way bad. I wonder if they're running out of, <laughs> are they running out of good box toppers? Because, like, these Everflowing Chalice, Worn Power Stone, Steronic Resonator, they're okay. Like, they're, they're playable. They're playable commander cards, and maybe that's the goal. But if you look at these, like, Chalice of the Void's a big winner. Wedding ring, I guess, is kind of expensive. Uh, eh? I don't know. These box toppers are kind of like medium. I feel like the box toppers are pretty medium in this set compared to past box toppers. But the set is so good. I guess it it's still it's still fine. Like it's not it's not ruining it for me just because the set itself seems so strong. Wow, they played a lot of commander cards, didn't they? At this point, Watsi is just naming things for Seth to pronounce them. I think that might be true. Watsi, wait, prevent all. Oh, is this only commanders? No, I don't want commanders. Are there even enough fogs in existence? How many fogs are there? So, I mean, green is going to be the main home of fogs. All right, one, two, three. I mean, I guess werewolves get us four. Prevent all damage. Creatures you control gain hexers. Five. Gain one life for each creature on the battlefield. Prevent all damage. That would be that. Ooh, is Fog of War worth it? Is it worth it? Irish Rager! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Bant is the most likely. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can also get our Fogs back from the graveyard. Does this Fog... Until in the turn, Oko becomes a copy target creature. Oh, not really. Prevent all damage will be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. Four mana fog. Prevent all combat damage will be dealt except by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. Okay, so are there fogs in other colors? The one ring. All right, what else do we got that's a fog? Teferi's protection. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna yes, help me, chat, help me. The one ring, yes. Let's do fogs first. What else counts as a fog? Is there anything else that, that we can consider a fog? Oh, people are going to hate us. <laughs> make, make, make people miserable for charity. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Settle the wreckage. Okay. That, that's, that counts. The three mana one from, whoa. Oh, discount and the turn. Yes, and the turd. And the turn actually works. 
Wait. Hot, Fox Legal and Historic. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control this turn by... Oh, Eerie. What? There's a white... There's a white fog in standard? Huh? How did I miss... How did I miss that? How did I miss that there's a white fog in standard? Stasis coffin. Okay. Oh, wilderness. <laughs> Are we really? Are we really? Oh, Nexus is banned. Nexus is banned, so we we can't we can't actually Nexus, which is probably a good thing. Reprieve. Reprieve. Um Board wipes are yeah. Oh, people are going to absolutely People are gonna hate us. <laughs> people are gonna hate us. <laughs> this is this is for a charity event. This is for a charity event. <laughs> this is for a charity event. I run a relatively new role page on Facebook. We have some great decks coming through nearly every day. Blessed, what is Blessed Sanctuary? Blessed. Blessed Sanctuary. Prevent all non-combat damage will be dealt to you and creatures you control. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, hmm, maybe, maybe. You could put that in the maybe, maybe pile, uh, pile. Okay, so, so we have the fogs. We have the settle. How else do we support our fogs? What's the win con? That is also a good question. What's a win con? We need to find our fogs consistently. Search for his Kanto is good, right? Are we mana tithing for the memes? <laughs> it's so bad in a blue deck. It's so bad if you're a blue deck. Um, end turn. And the turn. Oh, this might be hard to actually, okay. This might actually be hard to search because a lot of things say end the turn. Oh, wait, Snapcaster. Snapcaster's a fog. Snapcaster's a fog. Oh boy, this deck's gonna be so miserable. Yeah, so okay, so now we're looking for ways to reuse our fogs. Also, we need to draw many, many magic cards. That's also that's also on our list. I guess sooner or later we gotta have a plan for winning the game. Are we playing Howling Mine? I haven't decided if we're going to play Howling Mine. I don't know if we want to play cards that draw our opponent cards as well or just self-card draw. Tamio Field Researcher. That's a... Or actually, Collector of Tales. Collector of Tales is really good. The Mirari Conjecture. Oh, what about the... Mission briefing? Is that the bad surveil snapcaster? Okay, that works. Return graveyard hand. Oh yeah, the eternal witness plus ephemerate. That could also that could also work. Is there something that just returns every turn an instant to your hand? There's gotta be. Ooh, metal do we want a metallurgic summonings? Is that how we win? How do we actually win? Yeah, we got to add ramp. We need ramp. We need card draw. We need ramp. We need card draw. Probably some counters. Siphoner. We'll put that in the maybe slash alchemy pile. <laughs> Ooh, sky turtle. Shigiki. Yeah, turtle. Huh? Oh, hey. uh, we need green. Yeah, sky turtle. Shigiki is good. We need Millstone as a win con. Yeah, what is our win con? Also, what is our commander? That's the other thing. Oh, can we play the... Can we play the, the mana rock? The alchemy mana rock? That's the one... That's the one alchemy card I really want to play. <laughs> Oracle of the Elf. I don't think Oracle of the Elf is actually good in this deck. Because it's going <laughs> to... We're going to be drawing Power Knight instead of Fogs. Which... <laughs> Oddly is very bad for this deck. We want as much 
We want as much land ramp as possible because we are playing a bunch of destroy all permanent effects. This deck seems so brutal to play against. So we definitely want as much of our ramp to be land ramp as we possibly can. We probably will play like Arcane Signet or whatever. Can we win with Happily Ever After? Uh, we'd have to go five colors, right? We probably, we could. We win with Approach of the Second Sons. Things that cycle, also, also good. What mana rocks do we actually want to play? There's not, ah, oh, we need that new ramp spell. I can't believe they put it, they put two mana ramp in standard. That's wild. Ooh, is Platinum Angel and Book of Exalted Deeds, Fogs? Hmm, maybe. Artemis's. <laughs> oh, jeez. That is a ambitious win con. I've never won a game with Artemis's. I've never actually, I've never actually been able to win a game with it. Uro is legal. Yeah, I guess we could just play all the like Uros, Gross Spirals. Maybe that's the way to go. Like go grow spiral, explore, and just play a bunch of lands. All right, what do we? What is our best card draw, chat? How do we draw cards? We need to draw a lot of cards. Many, 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 many cards. Is Oko legal? Wait, is that a real? Oh, it's banned. All right. How do we draw? What is our best card draw here? <sighs> so we have search for his Kanta. Panharmonicon. I do love Panharmonicon. I mean, I guess Wilderness Reclamation is fine. That lets us play during our turn and then still tap out during our opponent's turn. Awake in the Woods. Oh, that's the one that makes a bunch of uh, land tokens, right? That could be... Let's put that in the maybe pile. Tamio Field Researcher seems like the perfect companion. Tap two creatures, when they deal combat damage, draw a card. Or no, choose two creatures, when they deal damage, draw a card. Tap two non-land permanents, they don't tap, draw three cards. Tamiyo ultimate would be sweet. Ristic study, we can, we can Ristic study. We can put Ristic study in. Regrowth seems good. We also get, oh, you know what we need to do? We're missing a very important step to building a historic brawl deck, which is we need to, uh, let me show you how to do this. You go to lands. And then you go to sets, and then you scroll down to Zendikar Rising, and then you add a lot of MDFCs. This is a critical, a critical step, a critical step to building a good historic brawl deck. You need many, many, many MDFCs. <laughs> uh, okay, that well, Term Timber Symbiosis probably doesn't work on that deck. All right, that's probably as many MDFCs as we can fit into this deck. All right, carry on, carry on. Ooh, land tax. Can we build our mana base in a way to support land tax? Ooh. The Mortal Sun. The Mortal Sun. So we need draw extra cards every turn effects. That's what we need. The Mortal Sun can be one. Cosmos Elixir. We haven't added a win con yet. I think our win con is there. <laughs> you know what we do? Is there a way to shuffle our deck back in? Is there a. Is there an elixir of immortality? We don't even try to kill him. We don't even try to kill him. We just we just keep going. We just keep going. We don't want to shuffle our opponent's deck back in though. <laughs> just just ours. <laughs> we don't want to win. We just want to We just want to absolutely drive our opponent up the wall. That is the main goal here. Let's see. Let's see what options we have for shuffling our library. All right, we still need... What are we missing, Chad? I feel like we're missing... I feel like we're missing card draw. I feel like we're also probably missing some other... Some other important things. We could use more ramp. More ramp would be good. Ooh, Wizard Spellbook does sound fun. Card draw ramp. Helix Pinnacle isn't on here, unfortunately. We're, we, would, we would try it. 
What about Primal Command? Target player. Primal Command might be all right. Search for a creature. So it searches for, like, Snapcaster. Shuffles Graveyard into Library. That's, like, kind of medium, but it might be... It might be worth it. Titania's Command. Exile Graveyard. Search for two lands. Make two bears. Counters on the bears. Do we play an approach of the second sun, too, just because... Do we actually want a way to win the game? I don't know if that makes it... Oh, wait. What does this say? When an ETB scry one, then draw a card. You gain three life. When it's put in the graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles it. Oh, that doesn't actually save us. Is there no way to never mill out on Arena? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're trying to build Turbo Fog, so I have to do this charity event, and somehow... I have to do this charity event this weekend, and uh, somehow we decided that the right thing to do for a charity event would be to uh, build Turbo Fog. <laughs> that's that's uh, as miserable as it sounds. Can Magic... Oh, Magic Mirror's going to mill us out. We don't want to go Magic Mirror. Clear the mind. I'll, uh, let me look up Clear the Mind. So we can play this. What about this thing? Is Patient Rebuilding worth it? Is it being your upkeep? Target player mills three. Then you draw a card for each land put in the graveyard. Yeah, there's no shuffle in Eldrazi on Arena. So we need we need rampant card draw and maybe more maybe more removal. I feel like we need what's our best evergreen removal? <laughs> I mean the charity the charity makes money either way. <laughs> it's the other people in the charity event who are probably <laughs> who are probably gonna dislike our deck. But hey, because it's charity, they they don't really have a choice. They don't really have a choice but to play us. <laughs> See, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the upside of the event. If you play against someone on the ladder with a deck like this, they'll just scoop. But this is a charity event. You can't show up to a charity event and then and then just scoop. <laughs> so they're stuck. They're they're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> They're stuck playing us whether they like it or not. Uh, okay, card draw, card draw. I guess we play. We still need a. We still need a commander. We still need a commander. We haven't. We haven't decided on a commander yet. The best we've gotten is. The best we've gotten is a uh, the Tamio suggested. We'll have to look through bank commanders. What are we... So what are we missing, chat? What are we missing? Oh, yeah. Is there a way to... Is there a way to permanently deal with commanders? Also... What else is just annoying? Is there anything else that's just obnoxious that we can play? <laughs> Since we're going down this path anyway... Is there is there anything else we should just play because it's going to be very obnoxious? We've already gone this far. We've already gone this far. So we might as well keep it going. Dranith, Dranith Magistrate's actually banned. Oh, Kenra's uh, Transformation is a really good suggestion. That's just a good card, too. Uh, we don't want to fail you because we don't want to stack our own. Oh, Sentinel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want more card draw. What's the best? What's the best unconditional? Oh, Tome of the. All right, chat. Give me your vote. Do we play Tome of the Infinite because it would be actually kind of hilarious in this deck, or do we not play Tome of the Infinite because it's a dirty alchemy card? What uh? What is your opinion on Tome of the Infinite? It would be it would be good in a deck like this for sure. I do kind of want to play the Mana Rock that gets Time Warp. Wait, third option. Do we play it because it's a Dirty, dirty Alchemy card? And our goal, apparently, is to <laughs> till everyone else who's playing in this charity event. <laughs> Maybe that's an upside. Maybe that's an upside. <laughs> Maybe it's actually an upside in this context. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we're playing it because it's an alchemy card, yeah. Okay, what is just the best? Uh, 
Did I add Immortal Sun? I want Immortal Sun. So what is just the best unconditional get rid of anything removal spell we can play? Oh, Cyclonic Rift is like a fog, isn't it? That's a fog, basically. Maybe we play a... <laughs> is there a Bant backup commander that has the five different versions? Mother Frogger! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. We don't want to text ourselves, though. We don't want to text ourselves. Upheaval. Upheaval's not on. Oh, is Generous Gift? I feel like Generous Gift's not on here. We could just play Wrath of God. Should we play Approach? Do we actually... Should we play Approach as an act of mercy? So we could actually win the game? Is it worth it? Oh, we don't have any counters either. Uh, Dovin's Veto. Counterspell. Actually, no. Is Counterspell even on? All right. Counterspell. Archmage's Charm. I still feel like we're light on card draw. I feel like we're I feel like we're light on card draw. Yeah, Archimedes Charm really good. Alright, chat. Last last suggestions. I'm gonna build the man let's build the mana base real quick. So gonna build the mana base real quick. We need Here's what we need, chat. We need a commander and we need any any final suggestions that you have for this deck. Uh, let's throw together a mana base super, super quickly. Castle Mantra seems good. Hall of the Storm Giants. I guess we could always just win. We could always just win with our mana. That's also possible. Um, we'll probably have some creature lands. So let's see. You, you, you. You, you. Uh, Scry lands might be good enough in this deck. You, you. So what is, we're gonna have to look through Bant and Commander. Oh, this deck seems so mean. <laughs> I wonder how mad people are gonna be. Do you think people are gonna be mad about this? Am I not gonna get invited back next charity event? <laughs> uh... <laughs> if if anyone gets mad, chat, yeah, I'm telling him it was your idea. <laughs> I'm blaming, I'm blaming you. <laughs> I really didn't wanna do it. I was gonna play a super, a super friendly deck, but my chat, <laughs> My chat said I had to. <laughs> Are there any utility lands we really want? Is Catilda in Lear? Catilda in Lear might be. I'll have to look. All right. Are there any other utility lands we really want? Oh, did I not get Breeding Pool? We definitely want Breeding Pool. Oh, yeah, we definitely need Breeding Pool. Uh, I mean, this mana base is functional enough are there any colorless lands that would actually be good i feel like so i think field of the dead is banned i'm pretty sure field of the dead is banned arch of Araska? arch of Araska might be fine oh treasure i do love treasure map i also love azur's gateway think of all the mana we can make Maybe we'll, how many lands are we playing? Oh, we're playing a ton. All right, chat. Last, there's no maze of if. Last, last calls. Last calls. Memory lapse. Memory lapse seems good. I will add it. Last calls, chat. Get in your, get in your last, get in your last. Uh, ooh, seasons pass. Oh, that is on Arena now. Okay, okay. Wash away. Oh, so one man I counter your commander. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. That is pretty brutal. Yeah, we could play Compass. I do like it. <laughs> Divine Gambit. No, no, we can't do that. All right, let's add Harmonize. I don't want to add Oracle. I don't want to... I don't want to shuffle Power 9 into this deck. I think it's actually bad. Oh, Planter seems good. Or Palantir, whatever it is. Okay, so... 
38, seven MDFCs, 45. So, all right, let's cut a couple cards. Cut a couple cards, decide on a commander, and we are we are off to the races. We are going to ruin... Uh, I, how many games do you think we finished with this deck? Oh, Tail's End is good. Tail's End is good. That is a that is a good call. How many games do you think we actually finish? Oh, yeah, we need Snow Covered. You're right. You are correct. We need to play Snow Basics for Into the North. Plus, we get the, the sweet secret layer R. All right, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> oh, we're gonna we're gonna make people so upset. All right, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. All right, we need to cut we need to cut a handful of cards, although we probably can cut some lands, because we have a lot of MDFCs. Field of Ruin. We don't, but I think we should. I think you are. I think you are correct. Where is Field of Ruin? All right. What are we what are we cutting? Let's cut a pain land. Let's cut the pathways. We don't have to we don't have to play pathways. We don't have to stoop that low. <laughs> I mean pathways are fine, but I don't like them that much in three color decks. Alright, so what is our what is our commander? Demolition field is better. In a 1v1 format, it really doesn't actually it really doesn't actually make a difference in a 1v1 format. Um, it's, it's literally the same card. Uh, do we not compass? We don't have that many basics. Maybe we don't actually compass. I do want Azur's Gateway, though. I accidentally took that out. All right, we need to cut, like, three cards. And then I promise we're going to play Magic. All right, let's... As we figure out what to cut, here are the... Here are the, the commanders. What is our what is our best option for... It needs to be a Bant commander. I guess we need to scroll through this for 15 or 20 minutes. Tamio is the best. Is Tamio the, the default? Lear should be in the deck. Maybe maybe we have to add Lear. Let's see. All right. Where's, where's the Bant commander option? Oh, my God. I wish Arena had a better system for this. Arena, if you're watching this, am I miss, is there a better way of doing this? Or to get to the Bant commanders, do you literally have to scroll through thousands of commanders? I feel like that's I feel like that's such a horrible a horrible design. I just want to see the Bant commanders. I'm just trying to build a Bant deck. I don't want to scroll through a million Boros commanders because they happen to have white in them or whatever. The gold button between colorless and lands. I'm afraid to click it now because I've already spent 20 minutes clicking through commanders. <laughs> Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're made it to Simic. We're closing in. We're in Grixis for some reason. I don't know why Grixis is an option, but okay, Bant, we have made it. So here are our options. Gorian doesn't do anything. Katildin Lear. Whenever you cast a human spell, target instant sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. Hmm. So that we need flash humans. Lagrello would be okay. Rigo doesn't do anything really. Shauna, I guess, would be it. What is this? Whenever you seek one or more cards, oh, okay, we don't really do that. Arcades, Falcospara, maybe it really is Tamio, Toskia, Chulane. Those are our options. I mean, I guess Tamio's fine. Is Tamio the way to go? Omniscient seems sweet. Yeah, I don't think we have enough humans. We'd have to rebuild to add humans to make Katilda and Lear be worth it. Tulane, we don't really even hardly play any creatures. Although I guess in theory Tulane can just keep bouncing. It can keep bouncing Snapcaster over and over again. Alright, I'm gonna add Tamio and then I will click the gold button. The gold button doesn't do anything. The arena deck building system is so, so strange. These are, the, the gold button doesn't even really work. These, most of these commanders would not even be legal for our deck. All right, let's, let's actually see how miserable this is. I guess it kind of worked. It made it better than it was before. It at least narrowed it down to, <laughs> it got rid of like Grixis and the things that we definitely wouldn't be using, but there's still a bunch of like green, white commanders that would not be legal for our deck.
All right, let's let's cut these last cards and actually see. Let's let's play a couple games and see if this is as horrible as I expect. Is this as miserable as we hope? What do we cut, chat? We got to cut three cards, four cards. We got to cut four Magic the Gathering cards. I mean, cut Tangled Thoral Edred. I don't know if we actually want a Mana Dork as much as I love my MDFCs. Uh, we can cut... I mean, our worst fog is probably this one. The one that costs... The one that costs four mana. Most most of the fogs are only for creatures, right? Prevent all damage will be dealt... Oh, dealt two creatures. Oh, God. Yeah, that's not even a fog. Why do they put fog in the name of that card? Hour of Revelation? Man, I kind of like Hour of Revelation. I feel, eh, maybe we could cut it. We have Farewell. We have Settle. We might need more Real Wraths. That is possible. It is possible we want more Real Wraths. Snapcaster. I mean, this is either going to be the best or worst... <laughs> Best or worst deck we've ever made. All right, we'll go down one hour of Revelation. One more card. One more card. Oh, we do need Supreme Verdict, right? Sun Vault. We probably need more Hard Rest. You know, I'm going to cut Inspiring All. I'm going to cut Migration's Path. I'm going to add Supreme Verdict, which... All right, let's, let's play a game. Let's play a game and see how it goes. We'll see. We can always update it as we go. We can always update it as we go. How does this deck win? So mostly probably by making opponents very unhappy and them quitting. That would be my guess. <laughs> That's my current guess. McGeary! Where's our deck? We just put all this... Oh, no. We just... Where did our deck go? Does Arena not want us to play this deck? Oh, it, we're missing something? Oh, I didn't craft the cards. I see. We're missing a Cyclonic Rift. All right. Now we can make opponents miserable. I'm sure we'll get in Snaring Bridge at some point, right? With, like, the list and all these special slots. It seems like sooner or later it's going to happen. McGarry for the 69th month. I think we might be underselling how powerful Up the Beanstalk is in standard. For slower decks, having a card that replaces itself and lets you draw off your res is huge. Can't run them out of res anymore. The Up the Beanstalk is actually really good. Would you consider Hercules? I, I would agree. I think maybe it is still underrated in standard. Hercules Final Meditation. Let me see. As long as it's not your turn, the spell costs infinite to cast. Bounce all non impermanence to his owner's hand and the turn. Who? Maybe. Oh god, Chandra. So it would be really sweet to get someone with. I like I like that aspect of it. It does seem like a cool like a cool card to get someone with. Ten mana is a ungodly amount. <laughs> that is a that is a ridiculously high cost. Well, I think we're dead. <sighs> oh, this is unfortunate. <laughs> Oh, they have a red mana dork into Chandra, and we are not going to beat this Chandra. <laughs> Come on now. Oh. Wow. I mean, that's... <clears throat> I'm like 99% sure this is actually just straight up game now. Because <laughs> we can't we can't beat this Chandra. We had multiple counters in hand. We just can't actually use them because we had double tap lands and lost the die roll. You can't fog away a Chandra ultimate. That's a problem. That's the issue. Hey, good luck, Mega Magic Carp. Feel better. How can we stop this Chandra? Do we even have any cards in our deck that can stop this Chandra? Well, we can stop this Chandra, but... That doesn't do anything. Who has a Chandra's Ember? Seriously, who has Chandra's Ember Cat? Who in the world has a red mana dork? Is this the... I'm pretty sure this is the only red mana dork in existence, and it only works for Chandra's. <laughs> yeah, I guess we got to find Immortal Sun. Immortal Sun would, would shut down the Chandra if we got there soon enough. Thwart the enemy. Well, um, I guess we play Tamiya. Play Jawari Disruption. 
Take up on the Ember Cat. Pass the turn. Gonna need a miracle. We're gonna need a miracle. Is Ragamon considered a mana dork? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it can work like one. I don't really consider it one, but it could work like one. Yeah, I guess our destroy all non land permanents is what we really need. We have. Oh, boy, it's gonna be tough. Actually, he made me cut Hour of Revelation, so we don't have that. Farewell doesn't do it. Yeah, I don't know if there's any cards that realistically do it. When it gets in, it's a Tamiyo. We get to draw a card. Do not want to talk. Well, uh, this better be a really good card. Otherwise, we die to Chandra Ultimate. It's a fog. Okay. <laughs> Imagine that, and then a lightning bolt. Sure. Well, this is what we get for losing the die roll. Dream Root Cascade and Yeah, that's actually just game. Well <laughs> Alright, alright, alright. That was very unfortunate. We have a new donation from Lesson Okay. Hey Seth, remember when you encrypted a tournament for Bandex? Any thoughts on doing that again for against the odds? Would be so much fun to watch. That could be a cool thing to revisit. Yeah, it was super fun when we did that, uh when we did that uh before. So it could definitely be sweet to uh to do again. I I will add that to the possibility list. Yeah, it's snowing. Wait, where are you at, mm, uh, man leggings? Sammy D, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ha. Ah. Okay, that I think was just unfortunate. Like, that was a very weird confluence of events. Planeswalker commanders are super rare. We had this weird, just weird scenario where our opponent had won the die roll, had a Planeswalker commander, also had a mana dork in their mono red deck. It was a lot of a lot of things just going uh, going in our opponent's direction for that one that we couldn't keep up with. Wow. Yeah, it's I guess it's about that time of year for the snow to start coming. A Rick Smithies found it land. And I went to Ithaca over the weekend. Have you ever been there? It's so fun. Waterfalls are beautiful. Yeah, Ithaca's super, super nice. One of one of the nicest cities, I would say, in in the upstate of New York. Well, let's play Ristic Study. Good old Ristic Study. Opponent, would you like to pay the one? What were you doing in... Wait, you're not from New York, Lucid, are you? How do you randomly end up in Ithaca, of all places? Yeah, I mean, this is either going to, well, draw some cards or slow our opponent down. Opponent's just going to go for it. Entish Restoration to get their ramp on. Well, we draw land, which is good. I guess we just... I guess we just Cosmos Elixir. Get the card draw going. Uh, we'll keep the land. Wait, we didn't get to draw a card. Oh, we have to be higher than our starting life total. Oh, that's super cool, Lucid. About it, a Rick Smithies. Gets and hits us. Well, play Sun Petal Grove. Play Tamio. Take it up on the Bramble Familiar. Pass the turn. Can we cast this? Not even close. Pass the turn about it <laughs> how good do you think this deck is so obviously there will be games where it'll be super annoying conduit of worlds is it is it horrible or is it good yeah uh tamio's not especially especially important Actually, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it's it's the best of, like, not meaningful options, I think. So, shutting it off with Immortal Sun, whatever. Not not a big deal, really. We need a Millstone effect. A Millstone effect to, like, try to mill our opponent out. Opponent. Time Warps. Okay. Yeah, we are playing Time Warp. I guess technically we probably should just because it's busted. Abundant. 
If you add doubling season, Tamiyo does a lot. Yeah, I mean, Tamiyo's a cool card. It just doesn't really do anything with this deck. Like, it's... We built the deck, and then we... And then we chose a commander at the end. So it's not really built around Tamiyo at all. Tamiyo just is... Big welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Zendikar Royal. Opponent. Uro. Well, opponents doing a lot of things and taking a lot of turns. That's for sure. I guess they're also pulling ahead. Definitely pulling ahead in mana. Um, our hand doesn't really do anything, which is awkward. Well, I guess we tick up Tamio on the Bramble Familiar. I have developed a new hypothesis. Breeding pool tapped. And yeah, I guess we just pass the turn. Draw a card. Discard two cards. Kind of awkward, actually. Well, discard, discard. Thoughts on Psychic Corrosion? I mean, we could play Psychic Corrosion. I don't know. I don't know if we're actually trying to kill opponents or not. If we're... I mean, I guess milling our opponent out would be a, would be a plan for trying to win the game. All right. Ren. Uh-huh. Does this turn into a creature? That's going to turn into a creature pretty soon. Aereo! Gold icon works with actively selected colors, excluding colorless icon. If you have no colors, you saw all multicolor. Oh! Rubrosk is dork, bro. Let me, let me see, Aereo. Opponent makes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, at some point, we're... And a great cheese. <sighs> We're getting uh, severely outdrawn at the moment, I would say. No deck list uploaded at the moment. Not yet. We we actually just build it. Might want to consider Reliquary Tower. Yeah, probably worth adding. So there's been a weird scenario with our opponent taking multiple extra turns in a row. And Rivers Rebuke. <laughs> okay. Well, this has been... This has been a... <laughs> so far, this feels like the worst deck I've ever played. We may have built the worst deck in the history of Historic Brawl Chat. <laughs> With our powers combined, we have managed to build the worst deck in existence. <laughs> All right. Sure. Uh, I guess it goes to our hand. <laughs> About it. I mean, I guess our opponent also has a Nykthos that's tapping for 10 mana. Well, maybe maybe we won't actually make anyone upset with this deck. Maybe, maybe we will just <laughs> brutally, brutally lose. I think... I think uh, cutting the... Cutting the Destroy All Permanent stuff was probably I think that was probably mistake number one I think we want we want all the destroy all permanent rats I think uh well discard are we just dead cosmos elixir actually seems very bad is cosmos elixir just a bad card it might be it might just be a bad card For now, their win con still. Yeah, I mean, technically, that's technically that's true. The problem is they can just conduit of worlds every turn, right? If they want to. So we're not gonna ever do anything, and we're already to the point where we need to. We need to fog every turn. It's a tough, it's a tough road to walk when this early in the game, we need, we need a destroy all permanence effect. Our, we got to bring our revelation. 
Well, okay, there's the card that beats Fogs. That has been that has been assembled. Opponents no longer needs to win with combat damage. That is an Ulamog that just exiles our library. Oh boy. And a Crucible of Worlds. Mm-hmm. And joint expiration. Yeah, I mean the plan is to fog every turn. Ideally, we don't have to start doing that from now, though. We just, we don't have enough fogs to fog every turn for the next 77 turns, unfortunately. So we need, we need to be able to, like, buy a little bit more time. The problem is here that, uh, the problem here is that Ulamog beats the fog plan, and we don't currently have an answer to the Ulamog. That's our, that's our big issue. Our opponent respects MDFC's opponent. I think we're making our opponent's deck look impressive at the moment because uh, because our deck has not, because we've just done nothing. We've just been like, hey, Simic deck, why don't you ramp and draw all the cards and take a bunch of extra turns? So I think we have contributed to our opponent's deck uh, looking successful at the moment. Well, we lose a life. Discontinuity. I mean, that is a fog that can keep us alive for a turn, right? And we can draw. I guess that's our plan. So pass the turn. Oh, watch our opponent have a counter. If our opponent has a counter, that's very sad. So we will pass the turn. We will discard, I guess, Glacial Fortress. All right, opponent. No, no counter, no counter. Opponent's gotta have no, if they have a counter, it's gonna be so sad. So we just want, why are these cards? Primeval Bounty, well, all right. Discontinuity, do you have a counter opponent? They only have two cards in hand. That's not a huge number. about it all right the turn has ended okay okay Elspeth conquers death can get rid of the Ulamog we're we're doing it we're sort of doing it so Elspeth conquers death haha -ha. Out of here, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. We are not dead yet. We're not dead yet. <laughs> it is not over yet. Uh, we do need to fog, so we'll pass the turn. Opponent untaps. <laughs> How playable is the Ancient One really going to be? Mm -ah. So the Ancient One's a really cool design. I think it's good with fight rigging. My guess is from a competitive perspective, it's probably... So here's my question about the Ancient One. Is the Ancient One actually better than... So is the Ancient One... Two mana, eight, eight, but you need to descend eight for it to actually attack your block. Is that better than like Urborg Lurgoyf or any, any of those effects? That's the, that's the question. I'm not convinced that it is. I'm not convinced that it's actually stronger than Souls of the Lost, Urborg, Lurgoyf, Cruel Somnophage. So that's my concern. There's about like, somehow, we live in a world where there's four different, <laughs> four different true drops that get huge based on, based on uh, having stuff in the graveyard. And I'm not sure that's actually the best one, even though it's the mythic. That's the that's the weird part about it. Hey Seth, with a new Eldrin bonus card, I have an idea for a fun against the odds deck, but I suck at brewing Cranko with Intruder Alarm and Impact Tremors. Ooh, yeah, Intruder Alarm. The tough part about Intruder Alarm is uh The tough part Alright, let's see if they found the counter. The tough part about Intruder Alarm is they banned it. It's one of the one of the ones they banned everywhere. Opponent. I'm gonna haze a pollen. Fog meta. Fog meta. The fog meta. The fog meta is here. 
<laughs> the fog meta is here. We will take zero damages. <laughs> okay. Wait, is this going to work? Is this going to work? They should reprint Goyf in standard. Goyf, I don't even think Goyf would be good in standard. I actually think that Urborg Lure Goyf is... Probably in standard as powerful as Tarmac Goyf. I think it's actually very, very close. I've said... that The descend mechanic, there's so many graveyard mechanics in this set that I have said Urborg Lure Goyf a lot of times. So many times. Well, we found a fog... One, two, three, four. Well, play to fairy. I think our opponent's gonna go off and then this isn't a fight. draw with to fairy and tap some lands. You know what? I'm not that Ooh, Cumana's awakening. Uh, all right, we will, we'll just pass. We'll just pass. Your opponent. <laughs> Your go, opponent. <laughs> Your go, friend. Um. Are we actually going to win this? If we actually stabilize and win this, then this deck is doing exactly what we wanted. We ended up with Tamiyo as the commander. It doesn't really do anything especially important to the deck, but... Oh, opponent, are you going to damage us with your 12-12 commander? How if we about a commensive festivities? Okay. Uh, sure. Draw a card. 66 cards to go. 66 cards to go. Yeah, I mean, Tamiyo, there's no other Bant Commander that really does anything meaningful for the deck either. So Tamiyo just kind of showed up because it's Bant, I guess. Um, I guess we could play like a five color commander. Maybe a five color commander would be better. We should be able to not die to the ring, I think. Worst case, like, Teferi can tuck it or something. Oh, God. That is a lot of cards being drawn. That is... That is actually probably not good for us. <laughs> no max hand size. 40 cards in hand. Sooner or later, they're going to find counters. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess we actually can't stop that. Sure. Opponent. Well, that's going to mill him out faster. <laughs> Opponent Zendikar Royal. Yeah, we're we're getting close to the point where we could try to cast her goals. Oh, jeez. Well, this probably isn't great. We're getting close to the point where we could actually try to cast her goals final meditation. Well, all right. This is not going to be good. About it. Running seven. Ooh, Eldrazi. Hey, Seth, do you think a Merfolk deck will be competitive enough after the Ixalan release? I'm a little skeptical that we'll actually see Merfolk. Like, so, apparently Wizards isn't trying to make tribal decks with Ixalan. They actually said that, like... This isn't supposed to be a set that's like that outside of dinosaurs. So when they said that, that made me more skeptical that we would actually... That made me more skeptical that we would actually see like a merfolk deck in standard. Maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe we still will, but I, I've become, I've become much more skeptical. All right, so opponent gets to control our turn, unfortunately. I mean, we have a lot of cards in hand. So what do we learn from this match? We need the destroy all permanent sweepers. Aldrazi are brutal. Nykthos is a problem. I mean, so I think there will be decks. Yeah, opponent's just going to discard all of our good cards to hand size, which is kind of miserable. See if they do it fast enough. I mean, we still have a one ring that's drawing a ton of cards. Like, this is absolutely horrible, but that's what happens when when you get Emrakuld. But our opponent is going to run out of time fairly quickly here. So, I, I don't know. If you look at what we currently have, I think there are merfolk that will see play in standard. 
are there enough pieces to build a actual Murpho deck? That's gonna be the that's gonna be the challenge. So we have a Lord. We have a Lord, which is good. Hexcatcher is very good. Beyond that, like there's nothing that really pushes you to putting a whole bunch of Murfolk in a deck. So that's kind of the the question. Do we get another Lord? Is there something else that's like Please play a bunch of Merfolk. I think a lot of the Merfolk, like I think Tidebinder is really good. Hexcatcher, of course, is good. The Explore stuff's really good. I think many of the Merfolk is cards are good. I'm just, I haven't seen enough of a push. I'm actually kind of surprised. And I think this is maybe like Wizards not meeting expectations or something. But like, I think first Ixalan was a like tribal or factional or whatever word wizards is going to end up using for that. Like it, that's, it was a set where that was the design. It was supposed to be, you build a pirate deck, you build a dinosaur deck, you build a vampire deck, you build a murfolk deck, you battle it out. This one apparently is not like that. And I think that's, that's part of, uh, it might lead to some disappointment from some people who are expecting it to be like the first Ixalan in that way. When, when uh when it's actually not supposed to do that according to what wizards has said all right Kristoff, welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so we will draw a card so that was bad opponent got to emerkel us and discard all of our good cards um we did find a supreme verdict though which isn't bad supreme verdict blow up your board Would you like to counter an opponent? I mean, I assume our opponent's a blue deck. They're going to have counters, right? We're going to Fading Hope their Elder Gargaroth. Sure. Oh, God. Well, that means I can just Conduit of Ruins again. Uh, Well, we're going to play, let's see, the Salistus in a land... And Humana's Awakening. Take up Tamio. Untap two lands. And pass the turn. Yeah, I think... So I think the new Merfolk, the, especially the Stifle one, is a card that is going to be really good in Merfolk. I think I found myself surprised, too, because I was expecting it to be a set designed to, like, push you into those decks, but apparently that's not the goal. Although Wizards did say dinosaurs. They are, they do want dinosaurs to be an actual deck in Standard. Tap the green artifact with Tamio. Yeah, we'd have to cash it in. Maybe it's worth it. I mean, I think I'm okay with this, so if our opponent chooses to use this... They only get to play one spell this turn, so they they get to. Oh wait, okay, it's only not land permanence. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent, so you get your restoration. Opponent's just gonna try to draw their deck. I think we want the other field of ruin. This Nykthos has been a big. Our opponent having an early Nykthos has been a big part of why this has went well for them. Yeah, we actually have the Send Howling Mine, I think. This one? Kumana's Awakening? Hey Seth, what of the new enchantment called Splunking and Mazes End Deck and Pioneer? Yeah, I think that uh Splunking is a uh, is a, the best gate card, Mazes End card that they've printed in a long time. That card's so good. Opponent. Oh jeez. Opponent's playing a lot of really big I mean I guess there is Simic Ramp. I guess there is a Simic Ramp deck. Tooth and Nail. Uh-huh. Into Double Gin Gataxius. This is going to be... This is going to be tough. Is it even... Wow. This is going to be super tough. All right, opponent. Gin Gataxius. And also Gin Gataxius. Our opponent is going to mill themselves out here pretty quickly. Jin is not a May. That is a you must draw seven tireless provisioner. Opponent draws a card. 
Well, how do we get out of this? And a tree folk. We need a wrath. We need a wrath. We need a wrath opponent. Passing. Draws seven more cards. Opponent has drawn their entire deck. They haven't been able to kill us yet, but they have drawn their deck. We get to draw two. There's a one ring. That's actually kind of sweet. An Esper Sentinel. Uh, so, how can we deal with all this stuff? Is it possible? Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, so when we cast something, it's going to get countered. We have Supreme Verdict. We have the Mission Briefing. So I guess we... All right, we play Esper Sentinel, which isn't very good at this point anyway. It gets countered. Sure. Now we can Mission Briefing... Mill land, keep the fog. Supreme verdict, cast it. Get rid of all that stuff. To fairy, take it up to draw our fog. Tamio, tap and tap. I mean, we are kind of making a go of it here. And then a one ring. And pass the turn. I mean, if we win this, then I think our deck is actually just busted. <laughs> if we beat... This is like our most impossibly bad matchup. If we somehow win this, then I think that is actually a sign. Hey, welcome Raiders, Jim. Hopefully had a good stream. We are... Uh... Oh God, Nick those Kiora. Trying to find a deck for this charity event. We we have built Turbo Fog for Historic Brawl. We're we're that kind of that kind of charity event participant apparently. Oh dear, Vorinclex. Well, I mean we have. Oh no. Hmm. So we got a wondering now. I mean this is obviously very bad for us. We can fog for a while, but can we actually fog our way to victory? Why didn't they play that before the Kiora? Well, I mean, we're not dying this turn because we have protection. Pony has, what, 32 cards in their deck. 32 cards, 32 cards. Ah, go in the, go in the Goblin Plant. We're trying to find something that's spicy. Muxus, I think, would be good. I don't think we have another Wrath to snap, do we? Oh, we can. We could Seasons Past. Is there a way we can win with Approach Oracle Moldaya? Opponent draws a card. I mean, all we gotta do is not die, right? That's the whole point of the deck. If we can just not die, we win eventually by default. Oh, about it. I'm gonna make some dorks. Sure, sure, sure. Our opponent also has commit to memory. All right, so our opponent is not going to mill out. Oh, jeez. Yeah, commit to memory is an issue. There's also a coma. <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. All of this is fine. Yeah, this is, this is not good. Wait, our opponent knows all these cards? Why... Why are their cards face up? They must have put some cards in their deck a million turns ago. Foreign clags being drawn. Do they? What am I missing? Oh, Oracle, Oracle. I see, I see, that makes more sense. Yeah, 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 it's, it, you're, you are correct. It's Oracle opponent going off. Well, I guess we gotta draw a Wrath right now, this second, this turn. Opponent gonna kill the Teferi. This has trample, right? It does. Okay, sure. We can no longer draw with the one ring. Pona makes a coma token. We need a farewell. We need a farewell right now. Growth spiral. And Oh! Oh! Okay. Um <laughs> Our opponent's tapped out, right? They are currently tapped out. Well, in that case. 
Uh, let's overload a wristing study. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. <laughs> we refuse to die. <laughs> pick him up. Pick him up. And now we can one ring to draw some cards. And then we can play a land. And wait, is there a chance we die to hasty stuff? Do we need to leave up a fog here? Is that a concern? Oh, I want to get down the key to the archive. You know what? I don't think they can kill us here. Hopefully. Wow, that was a bad key to the archive, too. Hopefully, they can't kill us here. Uh, we're going to pitch the Immortal Sun. Tick up. Oh, no. Are we going to lose to a Rixmathies? We might lose to a Rixmathies. I did not. I did not consider Rixmathies potentially coming down here. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what are you even doing about it? The ta who who even remembers this card exists? <laughs> the terrace. Oh, we're definitely, we're just straight up dead, right? Now we're just straight up dead. Oh, well, I guess we should have, we should have left up the fog. I guess in hindsight, we did not play around the terrace. <laughs> Boy, Pony just like filtered mana value seven or more and put them, everything in Simic in their deck. Uh, everyone is in there. <laughs> Oh uh, yes, we we did not uh we did not play around the terrace. <laughs> a reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish Pony. Coma. At this point I'm not even sure if our opponent's attempting to kill us. Oh wait, did there How many counters did Oh <laughs> Our opponent, uh, our opponent doubled the counters on their Rixmethus with, oh, come on now, come on now. Seriously, opponent, you're going to tap us out for two turns, really? <sighs> we need a wrath, we need a wrath. Our opponent, I thought they were going to kill us with a Rixmethus, but our opponent doubled up the counters on a Rixmethus with Vorinclex, so it, it doesn't turn into a creature yet. <laughs> if they hadn't accidentally doubled it up, yeah, the Vorinclex kept us alive there, I think. Opponent hits us. Well, I mean, we know we can Snapcaster Cyclonic Rift. Like, we know that's a thing. We get to draw an extra card. We have a D Spark. So we're actually still somehow not actually dead yet. Oh, onto inversion. Oh my god, we we are not dying. Are we going to win? Are we going to win this game? Free jazz. Just listen to the commander podcast. The sheet discussion was hilarious. Uh, how often do you change your your sheets, chat? Oh. Uh, I <laughs> Tomer Tomer changes his sheets the most, obviously. That that makes sense. I would have probably guessed Tomer or Phil. Yeah, we our top deck game has been good. How do we not die? So we can D spark the Vorinclex. So our mana doesn't get wrecked. <laughs> twenty three cards. Only twenty three cards left. Look at this hand. Our opponent's hand is so ridiculously busted. We need a counter for the commit to memory, though, or else that's going to eventually eventually beat us. Opponent. Okay. Harrow. Sack of land, get two land. What does our opponent up to over there? Hey Seth, I've been brewing this Simic Thunderous debut Goose Ramp deck. Ooh, let me let me see, chicken guy. Opponent, can the Vorinclex die, please? 
Wilderness Rex actually really sweet here. All right, opponent's going to commit it. Sure. So Despark goes back on top. We get to, how do we do this? Are, is this our clock? That, why is our clock running out? Our clock shouldn't be running out. Well, we can tap this. The one ring, draw some cards. We can Tamio. Tap you, tap you. My research has been compromised. That goes back to the command zone. Float a white mana. Onto inversion. Blow up all non land permanent. Yes, yes, yes. Warren Clegg's doing... If we time out because of this, I'm going to be kind of salty. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Please. All right. Blow up all the non-lands. Wilderness Reclamation. Untap our lands. Discard a... Ristic Study. All right. Not dead yet. Not dead yet. We are about to die to the One Ring, though. We do need to find... I guess we have to de-spark. Oh, seriously. Omniscience. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a magic card. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, sure. <sighs> Ajaya. Okay, so Atwara. One, two, three, four. Atwara. Bounce the omniscience. They can just replay it though, right? They can just replay it and we don't have a way to stop it. So this is still gonna happen. They're just gonna tap 10 and do it again. Mono Green Stompy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's nothing we can snap, oh, okay. So we can Snapcaster a counter spell. So Snapcaster. This is going to hurt next turn. Snapcaster, counter spell. We also need to figure out a way not to die to the one ring. Uh, counter spell. We can't cast D Spark anymore, which is an issue. Our mana is going to be tapped down for a turn, which is also annoying. Because of that boring. Opponents played so many busted things. About it. Yeah, I think we actually. It might have been better just to counter it right away. Counter it right away, and then we could have used a to bounce the one ring. I'm getting concerned about our impending demise to the one ring. Opponent plays a land. And. Our Teferi's gone. Our Snapcaster's gone. We can't make mana for D-Spark. How do we not die to the One Ring? After all this, we died to our own One Ring. Yeah, I mean, we did beat the Emrakul and the Ulamog somehow. <laughs> somehow, some way. I mean, we do get to draw a bunch more cards. Maybe we draw something that saves us. You know what we really still need is the farewell. The farewell would still be would still be the best. We haven't found the farewell yet. We only got 59 cards in our deck. It's possible. All right. We untap some of our lands. The one ring drains us. Lair the Hydra. Well, it all comes down to this one ring draw. One ring. Bellagate Recovery. Oh, oh, Bellagate Recovery. 
that actually can save us that can save us so we can bail again recovery to get back a Tuara. Play Field of Ruin. Field of Ruin. Blow up the Nykthos. Actually, can we blow up a Shia? We can. Should we blow up a Shia? Yeah, let's just blow up the Nick those. I don't know. This is bad. And so well, this has been the most ridiculous game of Magic that I've played in a long time. I mean, that's part of what makes Historic Brawl so fun is <laughs> ridiculous things happen regularly. All right. So we finally got with the Nick those 40 turns later. Playing Arcane Signet. Watch us somehow get value out of this Jirari Disruption. That would be the sweetest. Um, growth Spiral. Might as well. Oh, we actually turned on our D-Spark too, which is cute. Play a Restless Vine Stalker. And pass the turn. No attacks untap yeah d spark is on again it's on not dead yet not dead yet <laughs> not dead yet <laughs> not dead yet are we gonna win this chat is there actually a chance we win this about it land ashaya i mean we can d spark something silverback elder i mean that's just gonna mill our opponent out faster that's just gonna mill him out faster. Oh, that can blow up our wilderness rack? Uh, that's actually awkward. I kinda wanted that, cause I'm new mammoth. So maybe we do have to kill this. They're gonna go after our wilderness rack. All right, all right, all right, so Oh, that doesn't turn on our D-Spark. The D-Spark's still dead. Sure. We didn't really want that Wilderness Wreck. Not really. <laughs> All right, because Andu Mammoth joins the party. Just draw some cards, opponent. Draw some cards. 17 to go. 17 to go. Yeah, the memory is an issue. Opponent goes to combat big attack which we will thwart <laughs> got him got him <laughs> got him <laughs> yeah we tried to build turbo fog for historic for all uh you know what you can't even kill me i'm gonna block you for no reason Ashaya, just because I can. <laughs> thwarted. Thwarted. Uh, yeah, if we could get something with Jari Disruption, that would be really sweet. We can scry with this Castle Vantress. Oracle's back. Sure. I mean, we are slowly... So we can fog next turn. We can fog next turn with a... We can find next turn with the one ring, most likely. Which is good. Sure. Sure. We do have to bounce our one ring. That That is for sure, or else we die. So I guess we just do that now. Yeah, let's just, let's just do it now. Like, we have to do it. So bounce the one ring. I thought Charity was supposed to fill people with hope, not hopelessly crush their souls in sanity. I mean, we're raising money for a good cause. We're raising money for a good cause. We're playing against other other content creators, so I think that's fair. It there should be a challenge, right, for uh for raising money for charity. You can't make it easy. You gotta you gotta work for it. Time warp. Oh. Oh, does that finally I think that actually finally beats us. All right. 
Ah, the power of extra turns in the end. In the end, it's the power of extra turns that gets us. Watch our opponent tap out somehow so we enjoy your disruption in this. That would be the, oh, that would be so wonderful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seems unlikely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, Uro. Yeah, that'll do it. So Uro draws the extra turn spell. Yeah, our opponent did not shuffle it away. We can't stop it. We can't draw a card. Well, we didn't win. Gongo Tiad, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Although, I guess considering how bad this matchup is, I guess we kind of did good. Well, I mean, we're dead because they have an extra turn spell and we don't have a fog, right? So, assuming they cast this time warp, which they just put it on top of their deck with Mystic Sanctuary. I assume that they will. Like, why would you not? Opponent. I actually think our opponent's playing like one of the one of the worst matchups for us because they're playing they're playing a they're playing a bunch of stuff that works through fogs. Yeah, so now now we're actually just dead. Because they're playing all the Eldrazi that you don't typically see. We did fog things. That is that is for sure. That is for sure. But they had like, they had stuff like Ulamog. Yeah, if they crucibled first, we could actually got him. Uh, time Warp and Mist. Uh, are we really, are we really going to play those cards? What if we start a new season mid- midstream are we really gonna play him i mean can this archetype even work i probably not there's still a there's still not that many fogs so i do think i do think after seeing our opponents go off with nick though so we probably want demolition field along with the other uh along with field of ruin that makes sense I don't know about Awake in the Woods. I do think we need... Um, I do think we also want the Hour of Revelation. I think that I think that's worth it. Ghost Quarter is on Arena. It almost worked. That's true. Solve the Equation. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Do we even want Solve the Equation? What are we tutoring up, though? Just another Fog? Oko, Oko's banned. What is, uh, what is the commander deck you build, Doug? Divide by zero. Time warp? Are we really playing the extra turn spells? Ugh. I mean, I guess it is technically correct. Time warp. I mean, I'm impressed that we made it as, as far as we did in that matchup, honestly. I actually came away feeling like the deck performed better than it should have. Considering, considering the Ulamogs and we got, our opponent Emrakul does? Our opponent Emrakul does and, our opponent Emrakul does, controlled our turn, wrecked us in every way possible, and, uh, and we were still okay. You know what? <sighs> we'll, we'll, add, we'll try the Hercules. <sighs> it's so much mana. I feel like this card's gonna be impossible to resolve. It would be funny, but we'll we'll do it. Yeah, we cut the mortal sun. It looked bad that game because we drew the Teferi, but would Blastone be any good? Blastone would be fine. You sound like a Midwestern. What does that even mean? Give me an example of a Midwestern cartoon dad. That was, that was, okay. So a podcast went up on the Commander channel today where we, where we read mean comments. And one of the comments, one of the comments was me was I, I sounded like a Midwestern cartoon dad 
who got punched in the balls, I think was the exact quote. What does that mean? What does that even mean? I don't even understand exactly exactly what that means. Like, what? what is an example of... I thought of King of the Hill, but apparently that's not Midwestern. What's a Midwestern cartoon, Dad? <laughs> yeah, me either. <laughs> I don't know what it means either. I'm trying to think of, like, what, what cartoon dad that would actually be. I have a question. How are we going to be able to play all these new dinosaurs on Arena? Aren't they prehistoric? Uh, <laughs> actually, that, that was actually pretty good. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> You live in Nebraska and you sound like the phone voice, polite voice of every nice guy dad. <laughs> oh no, maybe that comment was right. Maybe that comment was right. Uh, can we draw some blue mana? Hey, thank you, magic gods. Oh, we're going to memory lapse this prosper so hard. Comp mission briefing for Cybia Siphoner. That is probably correct, although... I, I still don't know where I'm at with alchemy, with alchemy cards, or where everyone else is at. You know what I started watching? I started watching, uh, re -watch, well, I guess watching. I don't even know if it's rewatching because I don't know if I've ever actually watched it all before. I started watching uh, Metalocalypse. Do you ever watch Metalocalypse? I feel like Metalocalypse, it's not... <clears throat> I, the first season I thought was... I remember watching the first season forever ago. And then I read something about Brendan Small, which is what made me think, oh, I've never actually really watched Metalocalypse. Uh, so I put it on. It's okay. I The mixture is interesting. I don't even really like metal, which is probably the funniest part of it. The mixture of like music and, and like animated show is very interesting. The storyline, I'm still trying to figure out if it's good or if it's just nonsensical. I'm like halfway through it now, so we'll see. We'll see where it's leading because there's like, I didn't realize, I thought from what I remember of Metalocalypse, it was just, uh, it was just random one-offs of like these metal guys doing metal things, but there's actually like a storyline running through it. So we'll see, we'll see if it leads anywhere. Uh, yeah, you know what? We're just gonna we're gonna pass. We're gonna pass. We're just gonna stop this prosper. Pickles the pickles the drummer. We do have Teferi's bro. We do. Uh, all right, let's just reprieve it to draw a card. Ha ha, opponent! Your prosper is back in hand now. Oh, that's not a that's not a land. That's not a land. That's also not a land. Uh, that's awkward. How bad is our opponent having a Prosper? We need... All right, we got to do it. We got to do it. We got to draw cards. All right. You get your Prosper. We get our One Ring. Abonant. I take the Urbrecht stuff isn't interesting. Wait, what Urbrecht stack area? Huh. Wave Break Hippocamp. What is Wave Break Hippocamp? I actually have to look this card up. Um, well, let's draw with the one ring. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. Ooh. That could actually be that could be worth considering. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna be greedy. Cosmos Elixir. Got to gain back this one, this one ring life <laughs> somehow. Yeah, I could see playing uh, Waybreak Hippo Camp. Oh, I don't. Uh, I don't think I saw your historic brawl deck, Ario. Did I look at it? <laughs> can you send it to? Can you send it to me again, Ario? Uh, I do think Urbrask is cool. What Urbrask though? Well, we're going to have to start fogging because we cannot take a hit from this. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Well, let the fogging commence. <laughs> uh, we will play as far as headquarters. We will pass the turn. Thankfully, we do have about a million fogs in hand. That's good.
Well, we'll gain some life. Leave the temple on top. Pass the turn. Cannot get hit by this ancient copper dragon. That would be that would be the nightmare. That would be the nightmare about it. But his land gets treasure. We wouldn't mind a wrath. This prosper's still annoying. Professional face breaker, sure. Sure, sure, sure. And Yanti Lord of Luxury. Yeah, what are they gonna steal? Fog? Sure. Sure. Take our fogs, please. Saga Urabrask. Let me let me see Ario. I feel I don't think I've actually looked at it. Abundant. How was uh how was the deck played, Ario? The like Urbrask storm idea seems fun. How often does it actually come together? Is it uh has it felt pretty decent? Opponent. I'm gonna go to combat. Aw, you're trying to damage us, opponent. Um the fog, you dun 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 And then draw with the one ring. Aw, did you want treasures, opponent? Did you want some treasures? <laughs> uh, all right, we get one ring. Down to 25. We will play an Uro. Gain some life. Yeah, the Urbrass stack does look sweet, Ario. We'll see if, we'll see how, how long this game goes. Maybe we'll get a chance to, to try a game with it. Put the Besaju into play. Uro goes away. Play the Arch of Araska. Pass the, we're just gonna keep fogging. We're gonna keep fogging about it. Fog until we find a Wrath, I think, is our current plan. Ooh, onto inversion. All right, well, there's a Wrath. We did say that. Oh yeah, what is, uh, <laughs> what is everyone doing for Halloween? Anyone doing cool Halloween things? Are we playing anything spooky? Uh, I mean, right now we're playing Turbo Fog. That's kind of spooky in its own way. <laughs> Not really Halloween spooky, but I, I think it's probably kind of scary for opponents. Opponent. Big attack. Get fogged. <laughs> what's the What's the best Halloween movie? Like, I guess, like, Halloween theme movie. Not, like, literally, like, Halloween from the whatever the franchise of Halloween but Halloween movie you would watch for Halloween is it actually just Halloween <laughs> I guess it's got the right name well oh, there's Shigiki Shigiki and a bunch of lands opponent shadow of the enemy oh that's not gonna be very good against us I guess it does hit our Uru well the one ring we lose some life we play Sun Petal Grove and do we just undo inversion? We lose our Cosmos Elixir. I guess we can keep waiting. We don't really have to. I guess we can just like Timeless Witness. Timeless Witness, get back a fog. <laughs> Office Base is a, that's a 90s classic. Uh, let's get back a root snare. We can do this all day, opponent. We can do this all day. We can do it all day. Opponent. I feel like our opponent, their, their soul is sinking. Their soul is sinking. Their heart is dropping. <laughs> they realize, they realize what's happening and it's not good. Uh, well, we will pass the turn. Mm hmm When our opponent tries to attack us, we will fog them. We don't really care about Shadow of the Enemy, like, whatever. They exile a row. Like, six mana plus three more mana for a Grow Spiral. Not, not great. Uh, Vito. Yeah, we'll keep a Vito. We might need that eventually. <laughs> I mean, this, this is, maybe this deck actually does work. I feel like it's kind of working.
Ooh, Rocky Horror. I've never watched Rocky Horror Picture Show. I know it's like a, a cult classic. Never actually watched it, though. Hey, Zed, would you like to check out my new EDH deck? It's Mono Red Imodane Burn. Ooh, I'd love to. Imodane is a very scary commander. The one game I actually saw it go off with Richard playing it, it can, uh, it can do some things. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, that kind of makes this thing a little better. Getting back a timeless win, uh, getting a timeless witness is definitely better opponent going off with Prosper. Uh, yeah, let's let's memory lapse. Actually, okay, let's let's do it this way. Let's fog to make sure it resolves because that has to resolve, and then we can memory lapse. Stop that for now. Imodane the Pyro Hammer. Yeah, Imodane, Imodane can deal a lot of damage. Very, very absurd amount of damage. All right, opponent. Schwamp, aha, uh -huh. and... And... I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. Yeah, Imodane looks cool. Are you playing the... Yeah, there's the there's the Radiate. Radiate Imodane. Pretty much. Pretty much game over on a big board. About it. So there's a... Ultimate Guard Charity... Content Creator Cup, I think it's called, this weekend. That's Historic Brawl and then Standard that I'm uh that I'm playing in so I was trying to figure out what are we what are we thinking as far as a uh, deck chat have we come to any actual conclusion about what deck what deck we may or may not play well let's into the north do you actually think we should play this deck chat like should we actually should we actually turbo fog and live with the consequences i'm leaving this in your hands do we care about winning? Um, I mean, I think the ideal world is play something spicy and and have some success with it. I think that's, I think that's the the optimal. I don't think I think if it came down to it, I would rather, I would rather lose than play like whatever top tier like just not that Golos or something like. That doesn't really appeal to me. I, I would rather I would rather have a bad record and play something cool than just take whatever the whatever the most popular historic brawl deck is and and run it to be spiky. I have a Boros Super Friends list for straight commander. Lots of cards on arena. Could be a spicy build. Ooh, what's your what's your commander for that, Gabersaurus? <laughs> Rat Colony. Rat Colony might be might be too meme. -y. That might be too much on the other end of the spectrum. All right, let's just pass, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we will pass. Palantir, opponent. Would you like to mill us? Well, we'll keep, we'll keep Snapcaster, mill the land. Braids and Esper control. I mean, so Braids is, Braids I think is still the, my default. If we don't come up with anything better, then I think Braids is the default. Uh, yeah, actually we'll keep this Nook of Island, sure. Sure, sure, sure. All right, opponent, your go. I mean, we're drawing all the cards we could possibly need. Niall from the one precon, every walker makes tokens, so it's token of friendship. Ooh, that sounds super fun, Gabriosaurus Rex. I like it. Ooh, harmless offering. Harmless offering could be cool. What would be the So we played Alright, there's Shadow of the Enemy again. Well, I guess this is instant replay of Haze of Pollen. Haze of Pollen to make sure combat damage is prevented. Uh, 
Our opponent's got to be got to be getting to the end of their patience here. Counter it. Our opponent has all these very sweet, powerful creatures, and they're do they're doing nothing. <laughs> they're doing nothing. Oh, uh, what was the what was the one we played with Blood Moon? The uncommon Rakdos commander that can tutor a five things die. That would be a sweet harmless offering commander. That might be the way to go. Well, let me see Gabriosaurus. Dr. Shandor, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop, Jeffrey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Enchantress and draw the cards. Enchantress, Sethus is like busted. I think Sethus is probably. Ooh, Marionette Master. Oh, God. Oh, gee. Well, at least they had to spend all their treasures to. Well. Some of their treasures to cast it. Oh, that's that's frightening. Marionette Master is very frightening. That gets around five. So, well, now we're definitely gonna have to wrath. All right, one ring. Save us the one ring. We need to deal with the one ring too. Ooh, our revelation's actually kind of kind of perfect here. So if we kill this, we take twelve. Jeez. We take 12, and we still have the one ring. All right, so opponent Chandra's, we get burnt. Okay, okay, okay. So, we don't have a fog at the moment. How do we do this? How do we do this? What is our game plan here? This is a big turn. This is the turn that's going to determine whether we're... Whether we're uh, in this game or not. So. Uh, all right, let's first grow spiral. Grow spiral. Put a land into play. Play a land. I mean, we can just Hour of Revelation. Oh, it's a lot of damage. We could Elspeth Conqueror's Death. If we had a Fog, we definitely Elspeth Conqueror's Death. But we don't currently have one. I guess we can draw with the One Ring first. Let's... Oh, we didn't add Reliquary Tower. Reliquary Tower would be helpful. Let's draw with the One Ring. We're going to be discarding a lot of cards in hand size. Draw with the One Ring. Oh, there's Time Warp. Oh, wait. One, two, three. Oh... Okay, so let's let's time warp. Take an extra turn. Time warp, take an extra turn. Cultivate. Actually, the Celestis. The Celestis first. <laughs> Into Cultivate. Get a couple lands. Can we maneuver our way through this? Get a land, get a land. Put the snow-covered planes into play. Now we pass. We discard. Oh, we do Palantir stuff. Our opponent might as well let us draw at this point. Oh, uh, yeah, bottom, bottom. I'm sure our opponent's going to let us draw here. It's a land. Now we gain two life. We will keep Supreme Verdict. That's actually pretty good. A wrath that doesn't blow up these artifacts is actually pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oh, he might be good now. I think we're good. So one ring wrecks us. It hurts. It hurts a lot. But now we can Seagate Restoration. Draw a few million cards. No max hand size. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. So we draw a ton of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Hmm. 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 Uh, Cyclonic Rift? Pick them up, pick them up. <laughs> Super fog. I mean, they can sack the treasure to ding us for two. Sure, that's fine. 
Now we have Nomax hand size, though. Pwn has to pick up everything. Play the land. Pass the turn. Do some Palantir things. Ooh. Ooh. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, Stone Rain. We're actually gonna get him with a Hercules Final Meditation next turn. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> or they mill and take 10. That also is great. Pwn lets us draw. Sure. Settle the Rackage. We'll keep it. Oh, we're going to win this. I think we might win this. I think we might actually win this, bone it. We are probably going to have to tail Zenner on one ring, which is kind of hilarious. Mox Amber. Sure. Don't we die to the one ring? Ha ha. Tails end. That'll keep us alive for a turn at least. Prosper. Sure. Jerk, jerk him with the Herkum. And Chandra. Chandra is kind of annoying. I don't think we can really do anything about it, though. All right, all right, all right, sure. Oh, about it. I'm going to add some red mana. Oh, wait. Hercules Final Meditation. Does that bounce all non lane permanents? It does. So it actually gets around the one ring, too, hilariously. Are we gonna mill out? That's a wait. How many cards are in our library? Forty-one. No, that's plenty. All right, let's let's one ring real quick. Let's do a little one ringing. Draw some cards. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. This is uh, this is historic brawl opponent. Vanity rebirth. Three turns. Sure, sure, sure. Prosper does prosper things. Hits a very sad cut down. We drop to seven temporarily. Well, we're gonna play a command tower. And uh we're just gonna we're just gonna pass the we're just gonna pass the turn. No, no big deal. No big deal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Palantir triggers. Uh sure whatever. We'll keep him on top. Just beat a Golem deck with my Urbras deck. Ooh. I don't think we want to upkeep stop. I think we're going to wait till they cast this Marionette Master and get him with it on the stack. Or when they do something. We're hoping that their first move is cast Marionette Master and we, we actually just hard counter the Marionette Master. That would, be the, that would be the dream. Whether or not it'll actually work out. I don't even know what's in our hand. We have so many cards now. But that's what I'm hoping our opponent does. Is they're just like, oh, Marionette Master. Mm, 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 mm. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I know it's in here. Oh, boy. That worked out exactly how we wanted. Uh, so first, how many cards in our deck? 31. Oh, this is probably a horrible idea. You know what? Maybe we stop drawing with the one ring on second thought. Uh, let us just... Hercules Final Meditation. We will cast it for 10 mana. The turn will end. All non-lands will be bounced. Marionette Master... Gone forever. <laughs> All right, Stone Rain. I have I've come around. I've come around on Hercules Final Meditation. That was pretty good. Look at this hand. I have come around. Yeah, that was that was sweet. Uh, opponent, would you like to discard a hand size? <laughs> oh, that was so good. That was so good. That was so good. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get down the midnight clock. I think. Maybe we actually just play this deck because it's funny. I don't know if we'll actually win a game with it, but it is fun. <laughs> and it is unique. And it is kind of funny. We are just absolutely, <laughs> absolutely ruining people's days here. Well, let's play this Midnight Clock. That could be relevant at some point. Sure. Play the Midnight Clock. Play the Celestis. Play Cosmos Elixir. Do we have counter still? We can't. We still have the Tails End and the Archmage's Charm. Um. Play the Arcane Signet. But we had a lot of mana rocks in hand. Wait, why tap both blue? Why are you trying to leave with my green mana? What is going on with your brain arena? Um, 
And then, yeah, let's play in the MDFC. And that's that's good enough for now. We'll just we'll just pass. We'll just pass. Yeah, finding approach would be good. Approach would be good. We get to gain some life and scry. Vanquish the horde. I don't even know if we need vanquish the horde at this point. Let's put it to the bottom. The life gain from approach would be nice. It's not about to know what to do with so many cards. I seriously. Ooh, harmonize. You can never have too many cards though. Let's just get rid of Palantir. I don't think we actually need the card draw from that anymore. <laughs> now this game, we're the one that's gonna mill out. Opponent loves this Mox Amber. Mox Amber returns, yes. Doesn't even do anything, no legends. Prosper returns. Uh, Sure, I don't even know if we care about Prosper. I mean, we do have the approach of the second sun we can win with if we need to. I guess we could also add the Lab Man. Is Oathbreaker on Moto? So Moto now has a free form commander mode where you can set your own rules. So there is not official support for Oathbreaker, but if you play free form commander, you can uh, you can kind of do whatever you want. So you can play Oathbreaker because of that. Yeah, let's just tails end this Chandra. We can fog the creatures for for days. Um. Yeah, we'll just, let's untap. Opponent does prosper things. It's, ooh, Bajookabog. That's actually super obnoxious. Ooh, ooh, Wilderness Rack. Well, uh, okay, play Wilderness Rack. Is there anything essential in our graveyard that we really want? Because they are going to ruin our graveyard here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I guess we can, let's do this. Let's Timeless Witness. This is kind of dirty. We can Timeless Witness get back the Time Warp to take an extra turn. Yeah, Time Warp is kind of busted. So get back the Time Warp. Time Warp, take an extra turn. Uh, yes, we will take the extra turn. One, two, play the land. Play, yes, I know opponents are good. Harmonize. <laughs> On top of our, our lands, demolition field to the bottom. The clock ticks up. We draw Miria's call. Well, we will play Castle Vantress. We will explore. <laughs> Put a... <laughs> Bonus scoops it up. All right, chat. So are we playing this deck? Are we playing this deck for the charity tournament? The other option. Okay, here's the here's the three options. Actually, you know what? Let's let's real quick. This deck looks like it should play should play fast game. So we have this viewer submitted from Ario. Urobrosk Urobrosk combo slash storm deck. I feel like this should, compared to our last deck, which played the longest games of all time, this should play some very quick games. So this is just like, play Urbrosk and essentially every every card draw slash cantrip spell, and try to flip Urbrosk and trust that you burn your opponent out. That's essentially the, that appears to be the, the main game plan. Um, so the, the options, I think as far as charity, charity historic brawl deck, Braids, which is where we started, and I think Braids is, I would say, the most, probably the most competitive of the, the options is Braids. I think Braids is good. I think Braids is good, and it's also, like, fairly spicy, and it's just, like, a really good deck. It's uh, one of Lucid's decks. It is very good. We have Turbo Fog, just to make people miserable, for charity. <laughs> miserable for charity. And then, uh, maybe that's what we gotta do, is we need, like, stacks for charity tournament. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe that's how we do our next charity stream. <laughs> Did Immodane deck port over? Ooh, I didn't, uh, can you send me the list again? I didn't, uh, I didn't try to put it into Arena. I didn't, I didn't actually connect that it was a, a deck that could be played on Arena. I was thinking it was uh, just a commander deck, but 
I think the biggest problem with Immodane is you don't have any of the combo finishes. So it would be a very it would be a very fair version of Immodane. It would be it would be like Immodane, but without any of the radiates or any of that stuff. So you'd just be kind of like doing fair fair uh very fair Immodane things. You could definitely still build an Immodane historic brawl deck, but I think you'd be missing the probably the most powerful cards. Target opponent discards two cards. You make two black zombies. Well, we'll discard a bolt. And coming in hot. Well, play the land. Seize the spoils. Discard. I guess play with fire. Ping. Yeah. Oh, Virtue of Courage is so good. Oh, I love Virtue of Courage. If we can get down Virtue of Courage, is our opponent a discard deck? That's kind of... If we want to be really mean, we could play a discard. Can you try a game with Esper Control? I want to see if you like it. Um, I will see what I can do. Yeah, it seems like it's going to play some super... Some super long, uh, super long grindy games. Okay. Opponent continues to make us discard. Can you can you send me the link again, Stone Rain? I don't know if I I think I have it up here somewhere, but I have so many deck lists pulled up. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but we'll we'll see. Maybe maybe we'll get a chance to try to get in a quick game with that one too. Although it doesn't seem like it plays quick games. <laughs> My impression of that deck, quick games probably probably you're not a thing for that deck. Um well, do we just pass? Like, we'd run out Urbrask, but then if it dies, we do nothing. Yeah, I think we just have to pass here. Hey, thanks, Stone Rain. Fives allow both players to show up their deck. That's true. Good for, good for content. Wow, opponent is straight up a discard deck. That's kind of brutal. What does this thing do? Asylum Visitor. About it. Well, okay, let's Emberith plays the Asylum Visitor. Our opponent gets to Xander's Wake. Sing actually seems kind of busted. Emberith Flame Weaver. Ha. Well, I mean, alright, sure. Let's play an Urabrask. Pass the turn. How does one get the damage card sleeve for Arena? Uh, yeah, you can draw a card. Uh, you have to buy in the store. I don't know if it's... I don't know if it still uh, is an option. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what we expected to happen. This has been my experience with Urabrask is... It's too scary for its own good. And because it's so scary... It's incredibly hard to actually go off with it. Oh, boy. Um, well, let's play this thing. That's been my experience. Every format I play Urbrask in, most games, the problem is, people know, oh, if you untap with Urbrask, you're going to do something ridiculous. So they make sure you never get to untap with Urbrask. And, uh, and then... And then it just kind of never, like, I think Urbras to me is an against, very much an against the odds deck. It's the, like, 10 per, 20% of the time you do something really cool, and 80% of the time your opponent kills it and you're sad. If we stick Virtue, I, yeah, the problem is we're many mana away from Virtue at this point. We still need... We still need... Uh, so we need cards in hand. Uh, we can play Chandra, but it just dies. I think we actually just scoop. We'll give it... Oh, boy. All right, we'll give it... We'll give this deck one more one more shot for Urbrask. How many lands are in this deck, I wonder? I didn't actually look closely at the deck list. So I feel like... Uh, I feel like it's going to be really cool the games when this deck goes off. What percentage of the time that is? That's what I'm... That's what I'm not actually, actually very clear on. Thirty-eight lands. That's a that's a respectable that's a respectable number. That's a I mean that's probably the amount I would play. 
I might throw in a couple MDFCs just because I love them, but 38's like, that's that seems like the right number. All right, can we, can we see, can we see this deck go off? Can we see Urbrosk actually combo? So, Ario, do you can, how do you think of this deck? So this is a deck that you, uh, that you, you've probably played the most out of anyone. Do you think of it like a fun against the odds deck? Or do you view it as like a competitive deck? Is this a deck that like, you play because you, th oh God, we got to play against Jutaxius. Do you play it because you, uh, you think it like has a high win rate or do you play it because the games where you go off, it's super cool. Uh, opponent. Mike goes in the gardens and Arcane Signet. Well, we got to win before Chikataxius comes down somehow. Well, Ragavan Dash actually seems good. Just dash and hit you, get a treasure. Work. Oh, Steel Karn the Great Creator. That is. That is a hit. Just getting rid of Karn Forever is huge. Shala. Keanu, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup, Jimmy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent, honored heirloom. Well, I mean, I think we're going to just... Cold Steel Heart. I mean, we got to go for it. Why are they playing Nykthos in this deck? Well, play the land. Ran out of Urbrosk. I mean, this is, this is it. This is it. We ran it out. In theory, we have the spells to flip it. In theory, our opponent's also going to play Jingataxius. Well, okay, so we play a land. We... Spike Field Hazard. Jingataxius. It gets countered. Oh, this is going to be a great turn. This is going to be a great turn. We Lightning Bolt the Jingataxius. Does not get countered. Urbras triggers. We Rangers Firebrand the Jingitaxius. Urbras triggers. We flip it. Urbrosk. We actually did it. Now we can dash a Rockavon. And hit ya. Make a treasure. And... Yeah, we'll just we'll pass the turn. Pass the turn. Pick it up. Pick it up. We did it. We did it, Ario. We actually did it. That was actually so. If you untap with a uh, with Urbrosk and it doesn't die on your opponent's turn, it actually seems pretty easy to flip. Can't we just first sliver the deck with Tip Ball Trickery and a bunch of finishers to roll and see what will happen? What in the world? Oh, this is the scribe. Okay, the Fairy's Temporal Anchor. I don't think I've ever actually seen anyone play it. Uh, well, let's untap. We draw a mountain, make some treasures, thrill of possibility, discard a land, draw some. We just got to get stuff in the graveyard. We got to get stuff in the graveyard for next turn. Um, Ragavan, dash it, hit ya. Pound it down to 13. We get a treasure. We play a land. We pass the turn. All right, next turn's the turn. Next turn's the turn we go for it. Opponent gets to draw two with their temporal arc mage. Yes, deck seems fun when it goes off for sure, Ario. It seems super fun when it goes off. Yeah, trickery would be funny. Although, so the other thing to keep in mind about a tournament is rounds take a long time. <laughs> and once your game ends, you just gotta wait for the round to end. So I think one of the downsides of playing something like trickery during this event would be our game would probably last like five minutes and then we'd have to sit there for an hour waiting for the next round to play another five minute match. So that's actually maybe a, maybe a vote against it just because of how tournaments work. Uh, yeah, let's just discard the coming in hot. Find a shock. All right, stop on our upkeep. Shock you. All right, here we go. Here we go. Main phase. Flip it around. Passed in flames achieved. Uh, bolt you. And, and. Opponent's gonna counter it. Uh, 
sure. In response, Spike Field Hazard, you? In response, shock you? <laughs> Got him. Got him. In response, thrill possibility? Discard a mountain? Can we just win with with this counter on the stack? Ooh, ooh, dual shot, dual shot. One damage of each up to two target creatures, okay. In response. In response. Actually, no, this one. In response. Mm, mm. We did it! We did it with the counter on the stack! We actually did it with the counter on the stack! <laughs> and there's a soul foam! Wait, you can cast him from the graveyard! Hang on. Let's flip our... Oh, is this only as a sorcery? Aww! Alright, alright. Well, I mean, we can't lose either way. Sure, you countered our spell opponent. You did it. Wait, until end of turn, you may cast instant sorceries from a graveyard. If a spell was cast, oh, 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 okay. I was thinking, I was thinking that it uh, exiled any spells going in the graveyard to like pass in flames. That's why I shocked on the upkeep, but this is the the new and improved, friendlier version of, uh, of pass in flames. Well, flip the Herbrusk, and three more to the face, and that felt really good, Aereo. That felt really good. Yeah, I think a lot of the a lot of the things with reading the card, I think it actually comes from uh, just comparing them to old cards. Comparing them to old cards and not actually reading through the text of the new cards. So you think you like so during spoiler season you see Urabras and you think, oh, it's a past in flames for one turn. It's a past in flames. But then technically, even though it functions like past in flames, it's not a it's not technically exactly past in flames. So, uh, so yeah, I think that's what ends up happening. All right. Just for you, Stone Rain. Just for you, we will do... We will do... Uh, we will... Oh, I can't believe we're doing this. We will do... Uh, we will do a game with the standard control deck. We will... We will do our best crib impression. We'll do our best crib impression. Actually, do I even have the wild cards? What am I missing? Shh. Sure, does it matter? Are we actually being that picky? Wait, so it's because I said it on traditional standard instead of standard? They wouldn't let me play it? Ha! Huh. Okay, Arena. That's a new one. All right, all right. Here we go, Stone Rain. Here we go. So so what's our what's our pick chat for a historic brawl? Uh, excuse me, I need to blow my nose again. Yeah, traditional traditional just means best of three. I just have never had it. Uh, I've never had it care before. I thought you could. I mean, you'd make a poll if you want, doggy man. Sure, throw throw up a poll and see what people uh, see what people say. Although the poll is, I would say non-binding, non-binding. We'll see. It's not. I, I definitely want everyone's opinion on it, but not a hundred percent that whatever wins the poll will be the deck we play. But I do, I will, I will definitely weigh that into the final decision. So the choices would be Braids, Turbo Fog, or I guess we can, uh, I guess we can add Urbrosk on there. Actually, do we even kill this? It might be better. I think we just take the three. I think we take the three and just temporary lockdown seems like the way to go. Get rid of both of them. Have the smite left over for a godrick or something. Hey, Seth. I would love for you to try my Bant Flicker deck in historic brawl one of these days. Probably not tonight, but I'd love to see what changes you'd make. Yeah, you know what we need to do? So we need to do another viewer battle stream. 
But maybe what we need to do is like reverse viewer battle stream where rather than playing against viewers, maybe we do a stream where where the idea is I play with your decks and we and we test out uh we test out viewer decks and maybe Oh, do we just uh, do we flare this off? How does this go wrong? I think we do. Maybe we regret this, but we're gonna Jace full price. Take it up on the Shimon Devastator. Like, Jace is at six. It should be okay. Yeah, so get get in your vote on Historic Brawl. Up at the top of the chat, you'll see a poll. Wow. Okay, maybe they can kill the Jace. Double Obliterating Bolt. Well, that's kind of a bummer. We actually really wanted to draw some cards with that. Well, this is good, though. This gets rid of the Devastator. I mean, I think this deck's probably really good, Stone Rain. I would be... Really, just Lightning Strike the face? Okay. Oh, so... So do you just... Uh, so your plan with Jace is... Mill yourself for 15 Stone Rain to then... Turn on, uh, turn on future Jaces. Is that the, is that the main, the main plan? Why is there, I mean, I would say if you're, if you're interested in good deck, I would say that the good deck option is braids. I would say in order of how competitive I view the decks, I view braids as, actually, I guess we should be firing this up technically. Pony has no cards in hand. Like, how can this really go wrong? It doesn't mean we don't get to leave up the gate, but what are we going to negate against Mono Red? Plus, our opponent only believes in drawing land, so... You know what? We're just going to keep doing this. Restless Fortress. <laughs> going to go all the way. Pony down to 14. We're back up to 17. Pony has more lands than us, which is unfortunate for them. They draw Lightning Strike. All the way back down to 14. Well, you know what? Go, go, Restless Fortress. Fire it up. <laughs> Hit ya. Hit ya. <laughs> Down to 11. The best Restless Fortress of all time. About it. Hmm. Do we do? Do we do this? Do we actually do this? Our Jace is exiled, right? You know what? We have a, we have a plan. I think Breach the Multiverse is probably correct, but I want to see if this Restless Fortress can actually do it. This is a big day for Restless Fortress. I don't think he Restless Fortress. Yes, he drew another land. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. We're gonna 20 him with this Restless Fortress. Just turbo, turbo fortress, turbo fortress beatdown. Get your vote in on the historic brawl deck. So I would view Braids as most competitive. Urabraska is super spicy and fun, but probably most against the odds. Turbo Fog, actually maybe Turbo Fog is the worst of the bunch. But uh, Turbo Fog is also the most annoying of the bunch, so it's got that going for it. Like, if our goal is to troll other people in this charity event for some reason, then uh, Turbo Fog. Turbo Fog got him. <laughs> I will say, so the card names from Journey to Ixalan, uh, <laughs> Journey to Ixalan, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, the card names from that set are kind of ridiculous. Like, I don't think it's... I'm curious. I, I need to look at some of these cards with y'all. Like, did you know the correct pronunciation? I feel like a lot of the cards from this set that unless you are a, a speaker of the language, there's... It's not something you would normally know how to pronounce. So I feel a little bit better about... I mean, I oh, I'm, I mean, I'm bad at English, so I'm certainly, I'm certainly bad at, uh, I'm certainly bad at Spanish. <laughs> well, that actually, I mean, that was a beat down. That was a beat down. Is that the, I'm a pro enunciator, I would say, a professional enunciator. <laughs> really? No. So I'm actually curious because I don't know Spanish, but like. O J E R is this like a common like so if you're uh if you're someone who knows Spanish is O'Hare is that actually like a common word that uh that you would know I'm curious yeah uh from California so like 
oh here to me is a word I've never seen before in my life. Maybe it's like a super common Spanish word, because like I said, I don't know Spanish. So maybe maybe if you're a Spanish speaker, oh hair is like super common and everyone knows it, and you're like, oh, you're an idiot for not knowing it. I uh, for me, oh here is like a weird pile of letters that I've never seen. Never seen before. <laughs> These cards are in fake Aztec language, not Spanish. Then, wh then why are people? <laughs> oh God, I didn't. That actually makes it way more ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't realize. I didn't realize the names aren't really Spanish. Okay, okay. So they're actually just made up magic names. They're made up. They're made up Aztec language names that are actually. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay is o is o j e r a real word outside of magic or did they just actually is that just something they made up oh uh, looks hmm apparently there's a pharmaceutical company there's a pharmaceutical company with that name interesting Huh, yeah, but I feel like this set, the names are particular, for me at least, they've been particularly, particularly challenging. All right, one more, Stone Rain, one more. Nearest word in Spanish. Well, if it's, if it comes from Aztec, I imagine, like, that's not a reasonable thing to know how to pronounce. Spanish, I, that makes sense. I would like to know Spanish. Like, that would, I I think that that would be something that would be very, very beneficial to know. Aztec, probably, probably not actually that beneficial in 2023, I would say. I feel like it, it's kind of like Latin. I know people learn Latin, and I'm always like, yeah, like, good luck having a comment. <laughs> good luck finding someone to have a conversation with like uh, so yeah spanish i would oh no we're getting rot priest we're getting rot priested spanish would be would be very valuable to learn i would like to speak spanish i guess i should learn english first but once i get past that i would like to learn spanish aztec i don't have actually any <laughs> any interest in to me learning aztec is like in 2023 is like Kind of like learning Fraxine or something. Like, it would be cool to say, oh, I know this. But it's hard for me to see how it would benefit my my day-to-day -day life. I mean, I think... So, <sighs> one argument for Latin, I guess, that I could see is if you're someone who speaks English, English is based on Latin. So, I can kind of view Latin as like super duper ultra advanced english degree if that makes sense like i could I, I could see a world where that could be valuable if you were interested in like the history of the english language or something i think that's also english the funny thing is english steals from every language and it doesn't make any sense <laughs> English, like they steal from everyone, and they still didn't come up with a with a reasonable language. If you're, you would think if you're just gonna steal from everyone else's language, at least you would come up with something that's like logical. But no, no, we stole everyone else's language, and we come up with this mu very muddled, very muddled. Yeah, this rats are getting them. This very muddled, confusing language. Anyway, it's like the ultimate lose lose. No originality and our language still still is super confusing and weird and not consistent. One benefit see okay, that's what I meant. I meant the benefit of land of land is you can summon a demon. Although I don't know, I'm sure there's benefits like that to Aztec too. Is what is actually so I'm gonna show my ignorance of uh of Aztec culture i guess what is the actual name of the aztec language is it just aztec or should or is it actually is there another name for it um do we just take a land yeah let's just take a land i feel like so if we just take a land in a wrath i mean we just get to we get to just get to bury him here like we in flashback memory deluge. We got Union of the Third Path. This is where I love playing control decks because you get to the point where 
like it's really tough to lose you feel so good you got all the cards in hand you got all the card draw in hand you can react to anything your opponent would possibly do nah uh nahu uh nahuatl nahuatl is the aztec language interesting nahuatl um hmm yeah let's just memory day let's draw some cards yeah, this is this is the the clean it up the clean it up stage of the game. So Stone Rain, what is the what is the the plan for like closing out the game? Is it Jace milling? Is that like plan plan A? Wow, it's a lot of lands. Wandering Empire. Um, one two three four. One two three four. Yeah, let's just see Chrome Coast go. So we are gonna Jace mill him. That's kind of the main the main plan. Nahuatl. Nahuatl. Oh, man, it's Grelves. Yeah, I guess Jace Mill Breach back to Jace is actually pretty good. Well, sorry. Sorry, opponent. I have a Wandering Emperor. And I think we just snipe it. Might as well. This has been this has been a brutality. I mean, I guess double double depopulate. Pony even had a good like venerated rot please slaughter singer start, but double depopulate is so tough. <laughs> I don't know binary either though. Well, let's. Psychorphine Sour. Opponent's gonna save the Crawling Chorus. Hit us up to five. Sure, sure, sure. Well, okay. Depopulate you. And play the land and make a 2 2. And pass the turn. Yeah, this deck feels really good, Stone Rain. I imagine you have a very good win rate with this deck. It feels just like a very solid deck. Swing for... Ooh, Skrelv's Hive. That's actually... That's actually kind of scary. That is repeatable value. I Hopefully it's too slow. But I could imagine Skrelv's Hive being a card that would actually be good against us. Probably not good enough here, but... Uh, Alright, let's untap. We kind of just want to draw Jace. Well, whatever. Breach some multiverse, mill some cards. Uh, we will take a Jace. And from our opponent's graveyard, I guess Annex Sentry? Get rid of the token. I will keep watch. Opponent has 33 cards. Yeah, let's just... We have 20 or more cards. Oh, we don't have 20 or more cards? 18? All right, whatever. Let's draw some cards. Let's draw some cards. Um, Play the land. Get in, hit ya. I mean, we can probably just win with creature lands, honestly. About it. I don't know if Skrelv does anything for us. We don't really have any creatures we want to protect, so I don't know if Skrelv is, like, meaningful enough. Side note here, have you ever thought about adding Phil to either one of your Goldfish podcasts regularly? So, Phil will be back. Hey, what's up, uh, Cat Camp fan? Um, so, Phil will be back for Commander Clash podcast, I'm sure, because it kind of goes with how the season rotates. So, I expect next season... Someone else will take a break. Phil will be back on, which will mean he will be uh, be on the cast too, is how I imagine things go. The Goldfish cast is less likely on a regular basis just because one thing we've learned is podcasts with uh, more than three people is actually, actually tricky for everyone to have a chance to get a say, and they end up going like super long. So I think it's unlikely that we ever go up to four people on the Goldfish podcast. But we will see more. I'm sure we will see Phil fill in for one. And when he comes back in Commander Clash, I expect we'll see him regularly. 
Seth, I just want to say I enjoyed your Doctor Whom box opening. Even though I don't typically care much for break videos, and I certainly didn't care for Doctor Whom, the Money Tracker was fun. I'd be fine with more content like that every once in a while. That's a yes for me, Doug. Well, Cat Cam fan. Thanks for, uh, thanks for letting me know. I was curious what people thought of it. I think, uh... I think it's something that uh, we could see see more if people like. I do like opening. Like, opening packs is just fun. So I enjoy opening packs. So an excuse to opening, uh, to open some packs is kind of, is kind of nice. Um, do we just kill things? I don't know. Memory deluge. Te oh, temporary lockdown is very nice. That is a good one. Well, temporary lockdown. I wonder how long our opponent takes it out. I mean, the funny thing about playing control is it is kind of just like... It is kind of just like Turbo Fog, really, if you think about it. As far as our opponent's experience, I, I imagine... I don't know if our opponent's having much of a better time of it at the moment than when we were Turbo Fogging them. Technically. Technically. We opened so many Snarls! It's actually it's actually ridiculous how many snarls we opened in that box. They don't put snarl in every pack on the advertisement, that's for sure. Although they could. <laughs> Spend $240 on a booster box, we guarantee a snarl in every pack. <laughs> oh, universe is beyond Watsy. Hey, I've been brewing Herborg Leroy Texan Standard. Have you been able to, Seth? Do you want to see my list? I'd love to see it, Thelen Music. So, um, I've brewed many Herborg Leroy Texans before, but so far with uh, Ixalan stuff, I haven't, I haven't actually gotten a chance to do much brewing. Spoiler season usually, uh, usually a tough time to actually get brewing done. So next next week after after spoilers end, hopefully we. Well, we definitely get in some brewing. There will also be an early access stream. New Lord of the Rings guards. Wait, there's new new Lord of the Rings? Like, the, like, different treatments? Or they're, like, brand new unique cards? Well, Stone Rain, I will say. I don't know if I'll play the deck for the tournament or not. Just because, uh, I don't know if I want to be the control player at the tournament. But I will say, the deck actually feels really good, Stone Rain. So, as far as, like, winning, it actually seems... It actually seems uh, super sweet. Let's see. What are the new... Are they new as of, like, today? Lord of the Rings. There's no way they're spoiling Lord of the Rings today, too, are they? I saw, I saw a couple of them. I'm trying to I'm trying to see if I can find the actual spoilers. From what I remember, I don't even know. There's so many sets. I don't even know how to find the holiday edition Lord of the Rings card on the spoiler page. Oh, here's all the treatments, of course. I knew we I did see the treatments. Is there anything notable? From what I remember seeing the holiday release cards. Is it these cards? Scene box. So I know the scene box is part of them, right? There's. How do you keep up on this? How do you How do you actually keep up? I know people are hyped about uh, Logolus's reflexes as being a thing that could actually be constructed playable. The phase out spell. Oh, these came out during Vegas. That's right. I remember this kicker phase out spell. I think that's probably like a pretty good, pretty good commander card. The weird thing about this is I think these are all just commander cards. They all say LTC, so I'm pretty sure they're all commander exclusives and not modern legal. But uh Super excited to see what crazy stuff you come up with the standard with graveyard strategies. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to try. I'm a little uh, So here's the thing. I'm excited about Descend in Urborg Lugwipes and all this graveyard stuff. At the same time, I'm actually very scared that the decks are going to just be downright bad because they keep spoiling more and more good graveyard. Hey, like today they spoiled this cat. 
Three mana, three one flash, ATB, counter on it for each creature you control that left the battlefield. Gain two, scry two, or exile target player's graveyard. You got this, you got graveyard trespass, you got slow guide lantern. So I'm a little worried that Watsy is setting us up for disappointment, where we're going to build these super sweet, like, graveyard descend decks, and then people are just going to absolutely get crushed by graveyard eight. For an autumn chank, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey Seth, with spoilers that we've gone so far, Nixalon, do you think that this is yet another standard set that is actually for Commander, or is it going to be able to impact standard? Uh, I mean, so it's it's for Commander and standard, but I do think it's gonna. <sighs> I think this set is very strong for 60 card formats. So I think it'll impact standard. I do. I have high hopes that it'll impact standard. I wish we had rotation. I think that that is a huge part of a huge part of the same scene-ness of the format is, is not so much, is not so much like standard is horrible. It's that standard normally rotates. And for some reason, Watsi decided to not do that, which uh, that is, I will say, looking like a, every month that goes by is looking like a worse and worse decision. To the point where if Watsi doesn't start doing something seriously to improve stand, like seriously, seriously, not like, oh, we're going to do a thing at a magic con once. Like if we don't see like really big, meaningful steps, I'm going to eventually come around to the position that they just did it to try to make more people play alchemy. And it wasn't actually about standard at all. And it was actually just a, a net negative for standard and they knew it, but they thought it would force more people into alchemy. So hopefully they actually make some, some moves to improve standard because so far we just have not seen it. It's, it's all lip service. Like I know, yes, there's a thing at the Chicago magic con, like a one-off random thing, but ah, Watsy, Watsy, Watsy. Anyway, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of the stream for today, which is probably good because uh because I need to uh to blow my nose again with this silly cold. So reminders, replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Tons of uh tons of stuff going up on the YouTube. Spoilers and uh gameplay videos, all that stuff. A reminder that our sponsor is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash FTG Goldfish and most importantly, thank you to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular. And I love y'all. I hope you have an amazing night. Have a great week. Uh, definitely, if you're around Saturday, come and check out the, the tournament. It should be fun. Uh, playing some historic brawl, raising some money for charity. So check that out. Would be awesome to see you. And uh, yeah, enjoy spoiler season, everyone. I love y'all. And I will talk to you soon.